<laughs> All right. What's up, YouTube? Our tale of the tape. Evening, mm. evening reef chats. All right. All right. Every more, every time. Yeah. You know what? Thor was just telling me. Thor's our tech guy here. Is that uh, we should start doing these at like ten o'clock after everybody puts their uh, kids to bed? Uh, well, Dave's saying no. Can we have cocktails? I, I don't know. You can. I can. <laughs> uh, I, I'll just start dropping f bombs like crazy. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, every, everybody goes to bed, then you can watch the whole thing. I don't know. Um, uh, put up your demand for that. All right, today we're talking fish, right? We're yeah. talking 2004 because that's when I started my first tank. Again, we were debating this, 2003 or four. I don't know. We'll get to the bottom. Somewhere in there, yeah. Uh, we're going, uh, this time, we're going 2004 to 2015 after that. We're going 2020 is a day. And then a whole Whoosh. list of stuff, man, I want to see for 2025. Here's Most the, of it, I believe, is true. Here's the page for 2025. Yeah, we're going to go somewhere. Uh, so today, this is what you can expect to see, though. We're going to poke the bear. I mean, like, uh, or somebody's going to get mauled. Somebody's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Feelers. All right, so I'm going to tell you right up front here. Uh, today, I'm pretty passionate about this topic uh, of fish, and probably not in the way that you think, uh, but you're going to see it come out. Uh, if you've seen uh, that, that, that uh, like uh, uh, speech I did, uh, uh, oh, speaker event yeah, I did yeah. at RAP, yeah, you'll see it a little bit of that. <laughs> Probably not to <laughs> talk about, about dead puppies at this time. puppies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but 16 years of reefing, uh, I think this is an area, we're going to poke the bear, some people are going to get mad, but it's actually on us as uh, thought leaders and business owners in the industry to change the trajectory of some of the things that we do and specifically give more information so more people can be successful at the application of caring for our fish. It's like, yeah, like uh, keeping your dog should be the same mentality as keeping your fish. Mm -hmm. And for some reason it's not. And most of it, it isn't the application knowledge is hard. It's actually just uh, giving it or finding it, you yeah. know, acquiring the knowledge mm -hmm. rather. All right. so. Uh, if this is what I'm gonna give you a very specific thing if you like what we have to say today give us a thumbs up if you don't like uh, what we have to say today give us a thumb down because I want to know the bear that was poked yeah if you're like oh that bear thumbs down. yeah that's your, that's your way of mauling me uh, the thumb, uh, thumbs down button today uh, I'm gonna give you a reminder at the end of this uh, as well so yeah I don't know this one should be interesting I took All it right. out but I'll remember it so wind our minds back it's 2004 life's pretty good <sighs> You know, I don't know. Was I in 2004? I was in Korea. Oh well, life sucked for you. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. So we are 2004. I'm, I set up my first fish tank, and I'm starting to learn all of the rules that yeah. everybody's giving me. So uh, oh, I'd be curious fish. how many of these things you think are real uh, as we sit here today. Yeah, still, mm -hmm. it's that same mentality. All right, Let's one see. inch of fish per gallon of water. That was a thing for so I, I've heard of that for salt water. Uh, no, it was one inch of fish actually per ten gallons of water. I think I don't know. It was some crazy Anything. number. Oh, yeah. I was like, but if you did the math, then it was like barely any fish. I get five fish. Yeah, I got five <laughs> fish in my ninety gallon tank. Like, <laughs> Oh, that's no fun. That's not fun. I think a lot of it was just to try to keep the nitrate and stuff yeah, in it yeah, down yeah. because uh, back then it was hard. Fish poop. All right. Brine shrimp foods are super popular at the time. We later find out they have, like, very little nutrition in them. <laughs> but, uh, like, I mean, like, you're starting to hear the whispers of mysis and yeah. stuff. But, like, uh, brine shrimp brine. is, like, you know, you've seen all these, like, uh, I don't know, San Francisco Bay and Hakari. Oh, and yeah. Like all the, mm -hmm. you know, the typical frozen food names, and there's mostly brine shrimp. Yeah. Now, today, it's kind of gone the other direction. Uh, and for fish, uh, flake food's still popular to feed our fish. 2004. Uh, really, no clue, though, what, uh, you know, food makes uh, better than another one. A lot of that must have made the jump from fresh water. Mm hmm. Yeah. And this is about caring for our fish, by the way. So, like, we're not going to drone out about fish food all day long. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, this is like, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to how many fish to get, how do I care for them, mm. you know, how do I be successful, how do I, like, not kill them, you know, how do I make sure that they live. Uh, Eric's famous coral food recipe. I make this thing like in the first uh, few months actually. Oh, really? The reef tank. Yeah, so it's like that's where you see kind of DIY reef chili and frozen foods. You're chopping up shrimp and fish eggs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Where'd you find the recipe? So on, on Reef Central, uh, go and search for Eric's famous coral food recipe and you can mix and match it. It's not like uniquely his, I don't think. It, it's just a, a kind of an idea of how to yeah, make how some to of do this it. stuff. I'd really go watch the DIY 
Reef Chili video because that actually shows you how to do it. I think we'll show them. Yeah, we'll point you to that one at the end. All right, Tang Police. Full force. Oh, man. I mean, like, woo, they're a well-funded group of people out there. <laughs> like, I got a, like, sergeant. They got, like, the whole array, man. <laughs> From several stations across the nation. The pol- the, the Tang Police banner radio is yeah, going got off anytime. Robots scrubbing the internet scrubbing waiting the internet. for, like, you want a tank? No, you can't have it. You can't have it. <laughs> you better have a 500-gallon tank. I mean, what, was, what do you remember the reasons you couldn't have a tank? Uh, because they're, they grow too big. Uh, mm-hmm. They need room to fit. They need room to swim, mm-hmm. and uh, that was basically it. I think. Well, you certainly can't have three or four, right? Uh, uh, like these right here. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, like you just. Yeah, that was never. No, that definitely don't do no, that. You'll fail more for than sure. One? No. Yeah. So, and definitely not the same species either. Yeah. And definitely not two. You know, there's like some kind of odd number, mythical fairy that like <laughs> odds is better than than uh, like. Uh, even numbers of them. There were tank uh, police out you, there, though. Yeah, you couldn't have a yellow tang unless you'd set up a 300-gallon tank. You know, yeah. Like, whatever. I think uh, Kyla here, she says, uh, aren't they still out there? There is Yeah, um, kind of muted, though. Yeah, yeah was, I mean, hmm. we're changing that thought process of like, you'd You'll learn when we when we get there. Uh, definitely, the tang police still exist, but like you can safely make a, a post now about can I have two yellow tangs and not like get shamed into oblivion. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, so like one of the things you'll learn later on in this in today's video is, is it's not about can you or can't you. It's about how do I. Yeah. Right. The answer is uh, rarely you absolutely can't do it. It's if I wanted to achieve this task, mm. tell me how I could do it rather than just tell me that I'll fail. Yeah. You know, uh, and if you really are gonna fail and the chances are 99% failure, well, tell that story, right? Yeah. But even then, if you can tell this person's gonna do it no matter what, give them the 1% chance to success. Mm. Tell them you are going to fail, but if you're gonna do it, do it this way. I'm sure we'll get to the, like when we talk about, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't read any of these yet, but like when we get to like 20, 2020 or where we sit today, uh, mm-hmm. the Tang police or the people considering Tangs, it was never a question of, uh, are they there for a purpose? Are they there as a tool? Like that oh, conversation that was wasn't Very happening. Rare. No, right? No. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, uh, is it going to help me be successful in the whole tank? Uh, you yeah. Know, and can, and like, I don't know why, but uh, all throughout this whole history, it's been like shunned to kind of like swap out the tang. Like, let oh, the tang yeah. live in there for three years, outgrows the tank, give it back to the store You're, for somebody a bigger tank. When you buy a fish, it's your forever mm-hmm. fish, and this is yeah. a blasphemy to think that you might trade it in or or swap it out or get a bigger tank. And this isn't like uh, sharks where like there you need a 3,000 gallon tank and there just really aren't that many of those so it's probably not going to make it. There's actually a lot of people out there that would welcome a really large adult tank that has lived in captivity for a long oh, time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, if I yeah. if I had a 300 gallon tank, give me your biggest tangs, right? Cuz I don't want to watch them grow. I just want big ones right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. All right. Clown police too. So you can't have more than two clowns. You definitely can't have different more than two species. Mm. Uh, otherwise everything See, dies. Put that to rest. Uh, so at the time, uh, live aquaria is a number one source of information for me on where to get oh, the fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, even by the time that I got in, you know, 2013, 2015, or 14, same thing. No, I, I went grid matrix array yeah. of what, you know, gets along with each other yeah. and what's, you know, kind of reef safe. I made a... Reef I, safe with caution, pretty widely used. Copy and paste, <laughs> copy and paste. Yeah, and that's a... It would give you some of description of, like, the species, mm-hmm. what to feed her, what to vet on, yeah, and that, that vague, yeah, reef mm. safe. I took it like the Bible, though. Oh, I did, too. Yeah, so, like, at one point, they accidentally sent me, uh, I don't know if it was them or somebody else sent me the wrong fish, but I got a, uh, I ordered a Randall's goby, and I got a Rainford's goby. Mm. And, like, I was so sad on this, like, you know, one inch of fish or whatever the formula was. Like, I could only have this many. (laughs) And so I actually took the fish back to World of Fish over here, which is, like, a fish store. And I'm like, hey, can I trade this uh, for what I'm looking for? And they're like, why? This is a really cool fish. I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't do the thing it says in this thing, uh, the website I went to, and <laughs> I can only have 10 inches, and he's just like, you idiot. He didn't say that, but... Uh, it was know, all man. over his face. I was trying to soak up the lessons yeah. the best I could. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, that was dumb. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, Live Aquaria, though, I think has been the source of information on, for fish for a lot of, a people, lot of people for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of information uh, on the website. 
Uh, you know, I will tell you, some of it's a little stale. Uh, some of yeah. it's the same stuff I was looking at in 2004. Still. Um, all right. This is interesting, though. This is an example of showrooming in reverse. What do you mean? So, okay, so the concept of showrooming uh, showed up when the internet showed up, which is I will go to Best Buy and look at all of the TVs, find the TV I want, and then, and then go I'll go to Amazon and buy it for $200 less ah. delivered free with no tax to my okay. house. Okay. So I could go on Live Aquaria and look at all of the fish that I mm -hmm. want and then find a cheap place to go get it. No, that wasn't or necessarily cheaper, but I'd find all my information about the fish uh, on Live Aquaria. And then, and, then go it. and then go source it from somewhere else. Well, I buy it from the fish store. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so like, hey, Jerry, Or can you man, order this in yeah, for me? Yeah, can you order this yeah, thing yeah. or whatever? Like, I did the same thing. Yeah, it was funny same because I was thing. told, you know, you want to see them eat, you know, you want to, like, yeah. look at them and make sure they're not sick which is way beyond my skill set. Like, I'm like, yeah, it looks good. You know, whatever, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I, I was thing. told to do all those things, sure, so I did it. Sure, a lot of people it. did that. So it's interesting to see showrooming in reverse. And I bet you that's still going on today. Yeah. Uh, people learn about it on some of these websites, and then they go buy it in person from Jerry's yeah. show. Good. Uh, our local fish store. I mean, go support your little LFS. I agree. I, I just I, There aren't many interests where you see <laughs> showrooming in reverse that way. So... You know, uh, I bet you people do that with our videos, actually. You know, learn about an a ATO, uh, like, from Tunes, and then go buy from a fish store. I'll power to you, for man. you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, you can buy enough from us. Great. <laughs> uh, uh, so, all right. So, uh, for me, I bought at fish stores first. Uh, so, I like, mm. I like to buy my fish from the fish store at first, but I gravitated away at one point. I get to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean... I can easily go select out one that I like uh, rather than reading about all of the available fish out there because I don't even know where to start there. Mm -hmm. I just go into the store and be like, oh, I wonder what that is. And just like, De just like Devin said, I'd, prob I'd do the same thing. Devin, uh, Reef Dudes, he goes, uh, I'd stand in the LFS and read Live Aquaria at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing. Oh, man, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, all right, so, yeah, I mean, you're learning about it. I, although, I'm going to tell you one of the stories that you're going to hear is kind of tragic is, I mean, you're in the store. It's the best opportunity to learn about the fish. Like, why are we, mm. why are we standing there with Live Aquaria in front of us? Why there's a person right here that can yeah, help us. that's so, true. Uh, hopefully, anyway. Uh, so, I bought there uh, at first. So, yep. like, that's where I, I bought. At live, uh, uh, I bought them at uh, World of Fish. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other fish stores around at the time, and uh, but that was primarily the, the one I went to. And uh, all right, so I quickly moved on. So at what point did you start buying fish online, or did you always go to the store? Oh man, I think I've only bought one fish online. Oh from, really? Yeah, from Live Aquaria. It was a uh, I forget which ras it was. There was a specific ras I was looking for. Uh, and I, my local fish stores down in Kansas couldn't get it. Petco, my friends at Petco who had the special ordering catalog couldn't get it. Uh, so I w still only bought from like the Petcos and the fish stores. And mm. I trade, I trade people. I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of rescue fish. Like people breaking down their stuff because I, I was in the know. I was on all the forums. I was all on the Craigslist, mm. and I'd go grab some stuff. Uh, I mean, Petco is definitely one of the cheapest possible places to get a fish from. I too. just had an insider in the inside who could order whatever I wanted. Yeah. Oh, there's that. You know. So I quickly moved on to online, uh, just due to two things: availability and price. So when I was doing research online of the kind of fish, and I was curating the fish that I wanted to eventually fill this tank mm. with. I could never find them at the fish store. Yeah. You know, like the Randall's Gobi. I just found, like, I went and decided I wanted a shrimp Gobi, and I decided I wanted a very specific one, this white mm -hmm. and orange striped one, for whatever reason, spoke to me. Yeah. And then I also wanted the little candy cane, uh, like, pistol shrimp that went with it. Oh. I didn't just want any old pistol shrimp. I wanted a little pink one, you know, yeah. or a red one. <laughs> and like they just couldn't get it, or they didn't have it at the store, and then I could order it, but it was going to cost three times as much as buying it online, and then, like, I don't know, I tried that for a few times to support mm. it, and then eventually, like, this is just a giant pain in my butt. Yeah. And this other guy will ship it to me and it'll be on my doorstep tomorrow. Mm. A, I don't know. And eventually I, know. I broke. I like the, uh, we had a, I had an LFS in Kansas City, the Aquarium's Wholesale, and we used to trade, I used to trade frags with him all the time. We'd bring frags to his store. But yeah, that was always, uh, hey man, I want this fish. Do you think you can find me one? Like my thread, for, my thread fin cardinals, my blue eyed cardinals. I needed a group. I wanted a group of five of them, and I couldn't get them anywhere. I saw them online, but I'd just go in and say, hey man, you know, when you get your eyes open on a pair, on a five of these, let me know, and I traded some frags for it. Mm, there you go. 
Let me ask you a question. All right, so uh, take your mind back to that first fish that you got, or around that area, first tank. Yeah. All right, so what did quarantining mean to you at that point in time? I don't know. There was, I got into quarantining specifically to rescue, to get cheap, sick looking fish and see if I could bring them back. Hmm. That, no. But I didn't, there, there was no quarantine. Like, I didn't even think about quarantining. Hmm. Me either. So it was like, a, it was like a, I don't know, for me, I, you heard the word quarantine. You know, people talk about it online, mm -hmm. you know, and then like it was quarantine shaming and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it was like clearly aimed at pros and whatever. Yeah. And they go to the store and everybody like kind of says they quarantine then like privately on all the local club forums are like, yeah, that's kind of a joke. Yeah. yeah they're not really doing that, mm. what they're saying. And like, actually they're not even saying what they're doing, much less. Yeah. Uh, and then quarantine just kind of means there's something different to everybody. Mm. Uh, it like, could just mean that I looked at it for three days before I sold it. You know, <laughs> uh, and I don't know, it meant a lot of different things. But to me at the time, man, you know, 16 years ago, I'm just going to be like telling like it is. Quarantine was not an important sales decision for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably wouldn't have paid a single dollar extra for it just unless for you it. really explained it to me really well. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, man. It just wasn't on my list of things that I that was well explained to me the value of uh, or why I needed it or what would happen if I didn't do mm. it uh, or buy it that way. Uh, definitely doing it on my own was beyond my skill set, some we'll dive into later oh, yeah. as to why that is. Uh, but I don't know, 16 years ago, I'm, I'm curious if you guys feel the same way. When you first started that first couple of years, was quarantine like super high up your list of things to, mm. to consider? Definitely uh, and if you And if it was, man, uh, pat yourself on the back because you're uh, ahead of the curve and you deserve uh, to give yourself <laughs> some respect on that one. Better consideration for your pets than I had for mine. Yeah, I just like, you gotta own, you know, what yeah. it was. If you don't own your past, man, you'll never get passed into the future. Mm. Uh, all right, so, uh, uh, I also, at this point in time, I'm buying not a goldfish. It's not a dollar ninety nine. Right. My long nose hawkfish though is like you know sixty nine bucks or yep. something like yep. that. Yep. So it's also not an impulse buy, mm. but it's somewhere in between. You yeah. know, I'm not buying a pet yet. This isn't a German Shepherd. No, and I'm not you buying know? my my prize. You know. Like if I was buying a designer dog for a couple grand and seeking no. out a, a breeder in another state and taking all that time. Mm -mm. Uh, these things are kind of available to me at a decent price point and I'm not considering their like five, 10 year history with me. No, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, I just have to be honest about it. At, at, at that point in time, my first couple of years of reefing, 16 years ago, it's not a goldfish. It's also, uh, you know, not uh, a golden retriever, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to say it uh, anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you later on though, I've had fish that have been with me longer than any dog I've ever owned. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, I will tell you, I speak differently today, uh, but like all the same, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> know, it wasn't that at that time. So uh, QT though, quarantining is heavily marketed. So it doesn't mean a lot to me at this point in time. I don't really know what it is, and probably because they don't actually say what it is. Yeah. Uh, anywhere, but like uh, you know, every website you go to says uh, these things are quarantined. quarantined. Yeah, quarantined mm. uh, guarantee. You know, quarantine at the fish store. It says on the side of the yeah. wall. You know. Yeah. And then privately, you ask the people, and this is all variant on each store. So I'm sure there's stores that do it out great, and if they are, you should definitely support that place. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, uh, but it's pretty sketchy. But it's heavily marketed, and and so I don't know. Uh, 2004, and the alive guarantee is heavily marketed too. So like, uh, you, you know, you buy a fish oh, online, the, and like. You know, it, it should live for two weeks or we'll you know, replace it or yeah. fund it mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I got mixed feelings about that one, you know, going, you know, you know a decade mm. later. I'll explain that a little bit later, ah, too, I think. Uh, I, well, I'll just say it right now. Most of the fish that I've experienced people killing uh, is exactly that. It, it, if I had to weigh the amount of fish that die uh, in somebody's tank, it is... Uh, like unhealthy fish 
versus uh, I let my other fish kill it in aggression, in poor water quality, and no acclimation, and like all the other ways that fish die in the mm. first uh, week or two. I think this one's much greater than they gave you this uh, super unhealthy fish that died the moment it touched your water. <laughs> True. I, I don't know. I mean, it, there's no science uh, to back that up. But it's interesting, though, that we all kind of expect, uh, you know, them to, you know, pay for some of our inadequacies, uh, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I, I, but I don't know the right answer to that because you can't really see the, to, you don't know. You don't know, man, uh, which one it was. So maybe just build that into the price and so be it. But if you've had to take a, if you had to take advantage of those uh, 14, those guarantees, they, they were pretty good about it. Okay, I will tell you, in 2004 they were. Uh, let's fast forward and it gets worse by the year. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd be curious how many people out there has, have tried to, uh, you know, cash in on the cash guarantee. in on your guarantee uh, without a monumental series of headaches. Mm. Uh, I don't know. So, you know, I'd be curious to hear that. Well, that moves us into 2000, the All next right. decade. So that's just the starting point yeah. for my history here. Uh, and so. Now we're looking about the next decade. You know, what, would, what did reefing look like? And, and I gotta say, like, I don't know, man. I really feel like I dove into the gauntlet of this. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm sitting here where I am now today, I must have. But, <laughs> like, I really feel like I dove in. I was reading all the books, and I was on the forums constantly. We saw, I made 3,500 posts on just that one forum alone, you know? <laughs> and like, I was just really into this. Uh, and so I'm trying to learn, man, as much as I can. So finally I decided to buy, uh, it was some engineer gobies. I, I, like I couldn't have eels in this tank mm -hmm. and these things are kind of close to eels and I was just okay with the fact that they were gonna move all my sand around. Yeah. Uh, but like this time, I got all these other fish in here that I'm really happy with. I'm gonna quarantine these guys, right? Uh, and mm. uh, you know, I also, I think I got a flame angel at the time to and all I did is kill them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, they just died. Uh, like, and they died rapidly. So I tried to do my best to set up this uh, like hospital tank. And all I was really gonna do was observe them and yeah. make sure they weren't sick before I moved them over to the other tank. Yeah, not actively and medicate. I think they got Brook, uh, mm. is what, uh, not Brook. Uh, what's worse than Ick? I'm spacing it now, Velvet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. I think they got velvet is what they got. And then like, it's just like slothed all over them. It's terrible Oof. looking, you know? And I'm like, at that point, like, I had never lost a fish yet. And like, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. And like, the only ones I lost are the ones I put in a QT. <laughs> Screw this, this is for the birds. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just felt like, I felt like I put these fish into a very unstable environment uh, mm -hmm. with some PVC instead mm -hmm. of live rock and stuff and like, I just created the world that they were going to die in instead of trying to help them. Mm. So does that is was that I'm looking at your next one here the first your first attempt at saving a mm -hmm. fish was it those that you were trying to save? So I'm trying to remember if it was that or because I had some clowns they got brook. Ah, they, no, I was trying to breed clowns in my basement. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where I got those. Uh, yeah, so those just died. But I actually tried to uh, 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 breed clowns in my basement. So I bought like a pair of like every known clown. Yeah. And I was like, had these tanks all in my basement. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, two of them got sick. And uh, I, you know, found out they had brook. And I was told the only cure for this was formalin. Mm. And like I went to all the fish stores and they laughed at me and told me that you shouldn't be listening to the internet and oh, that yeah. the formalin is a joke, you need this ick thing, you know, copper is the solution for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I These people on the, on the forums are pretty damn convincing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I got the formalin in time. I like overnighted the formalin and uh, uh, I gotta tell you, the fish died. Yeah. So the moral of the story on the formalin and all that stuff is, uh, if you don't have, if you don't know how to see the first signs of it, and you don't know how to treat, and you don't have it on hand, uh, just it's euthanize the cost. fish. Yeah. You, you're mm. just gonna suffer, make this fish suffer, yeah. man. Uh, if you're gonna, if you uh, you're gonna ship it formalin a couple days from now mm -hmm. uh, and let that parasite. Maybe you could freshwater dip the thing enough. Yeah. To, I don't know. Huh. Man. But if it's your first rodeo trying to treat a fish, 
The reality is if you're going to actually try to treat fish, you should have a series of medications in a little cupboard at your house. Like almost every fish keeper should have like five different things. Just in case, yeah. yeah. So I tried to, my first time I tried to rescue a fish, uh, I got an orange, I had this orange shoulder tang. I had my six foot and 125. I love this orange shoulder. It wasn't looking too good in the fish store, so I got it at a discounted price. I had a 55 set up with PVC, and I had this uh, the air sp or the sponge filter that had been soaking forever, so I knew like I needed some some bacteria and whatnot in there. Some, and uh, I got him swimming, I got him eating. He was looking good, and then I decided like I was just going to do the same thing. I was just going to watch him, mm -hmm. see, make sure that he you know get him to feed, get him to eat, get him healthy and swimming. And then I'm reading, and I'm reading all these like medication posts and these uh, preventative, you know, medications and whatnot. So I grabbed Prazi Pro and Prazi Quantal or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, had no idea about like the drop in oxygen that they could do. Mm -hmm. And I dosed, I dosed it like I should. And I was like, oh man, I'm doing good for this fish. He's already on the up and up. And he's next thing I know, I come out in the next morning, gone, just. I have no idea. Okay, so th I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say this later, but I'm going to say it right now. Uh, so, like, if you were looking for how to treat uh, a fish, uh, you're not looking at the two right guys. Uh, yeah, it's no. not Randy and Ryan uh, about how to, you know, treat your Some sick fish. Really I'm smart ones out there. Share other people's information along the way, but it's other people's information, and this is the reason why, is because. It's the fish wholesalers and the fish uh, people who work at uh, like local fish stores. Mm. These are the people you want to talk to in treating fish because they treat hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of fish. Yeah. Right. They come in. They do it weekly. They do it uh, biweekly. They're constantly. It's part of their DNA. And then profitability of that company is based on their ability to do it. As a reefer, it is so hard to get that same skill set. In. Because for me, man, I put my first like ten fish in there, and they live for two years. Like, and then like <laughs> the first time I try it, I have a bad experience. Like, you know, the nature of any skill set is you hone it, and like you didn't know about uh, the oxygen with the Prozzi Pro. Well, um, now you do. I do now. So now Trial I learn that error. one. But I'm yeah. learning the next lesson, the next lesson, the next lesson. And what you thought was ick was really velvet. We thought was velvet was brook. What you thought was brook was some kind of ick resistant to uh, copper resistant ick like, who knows man like you know like <laughs> so like you just the only way you're going to do that is through sheer numbers of, of re repetition yeah right or really distinct advice yeah you know really really clear pass do it this way and the nature of it is when you go researching in the communities is there's 30 different ways to do it and it's like and then you just kind of meld it all together and come out with garbage oh 30 ways to do it plus the whole mix of myths that have never worked for anybody but they're still out there revolving mm, the around myths, yeah. yeah uh go if, if you want to like you could skip today's episode watch uh, or go read a bunch of humble fish articles and uh, similar type yeah, authorities out, and uh, you'll find them humble fish was also on uh, uh malev's reef the other day on the live stream oh. check that one out too yeah, it's pretty good go. conversation right on all right, so uh, moving on. Uh, so we're going to get into a habitat of fish. We're going to get into all kinds of other stuff here. So hang on with us. Uh, and a, a live guarantee now. I've tried it. It is super hard to obtain. Oh. Uh, it's uh, like uh, the biggest bait and switch for me I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, so the stay alive guarantee, uh, I've, I tried it a few different times with a few different vendors. I'm not going to burn any of them, so I'm not going to say who they were. But yeah. uh, like... The the thing about it was is like hey, you gotta take a picture of this dead fish. You gotta send it in. They may want like a second one, and then like uh, you don't get your shipping refunded. So yeah, I like got a credit. Uh, you, you know, again. you know, for like this fish, but like I have to now pay sixty bucks in shipping to get it. Uh, also, all of a sudden, they're like trying to stop like you know fraud or something, man. So like, I can't use the credit on a different type of fish because I could have just said like my fish died, mm -hmm. took a picture of it out of water. I don't know, but they don't have that fish at the time, so I can't even use my credit because I can only use it on the fish that I already had. Yeah, shenanigans. <laughs> I, I don't. And then you're just like, I don't even call it. No, it's garbage. Yeah. You know? And uh, I don't know. And like, 
I've, I haven't actually ever tried to return a dead fish to a fish store before, but like I've heard people, you know, it really depends on the store. You know, the store's super helpful, then this isn't the case. Mm -hmm. If they're not, then it's like 20 questions and what did you do? Yeah. You know, like I, I don't need that interrogation either. <laughs> I, I don't know. So for me, the alive guarantee, great that it's there. Uh, great if you're really willing to jump through some hoops. And I bet you there's 15 people out there saying, no, it worked really yeah. great for me. I, I don't know. It depends on where you shopped. Uh, but I got to tell you. Yeah, well, it depends on the fish, too. Like, if clowns are so readily available and I had my clown go down and I put in a, a claim for a clown, it'd be kind of easy to replace that. But I think we had some kind of goby here that we tried to do the same thing with. Mm. And it, we, yeah. had, we had the same runaround. Uh, yeah, it took they, forever. They, and we couldn't get it ever, yeah. ever because we didn't, they didn't have the fish. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. All right, anyway. Uh, so reef safe with caution is the biggest pile of trash I've ever read in my whole life. <laughs> this uh, is 2004 to 2015. To today, actually. Oh, still today. Yeah, still to this day. <laughs> so, like, you read uh, all of this stuff, and it says, you know, like, you're trying to figure out, can I put this in my reef tank? Reef safe with it seems, caution. It seems like 95% of this thing either says no or with caution. With caution. There's only, like, 5% that actually says yes. Reef safe. Okay, so, but what does with caution mean, man? I don't know. Yeah, like sometimes it only <laughs> means that they'll eat your peppermint shrimp. They've been known every okay, well, every once in a while in a very certain amount of tanks to nibble nibble on a coral. Okay, or ninety five percent of the time these guys are gonna coral eat coral. But if you hit the like uh, you know uh, you know Yahtzee, uh, then maybe it won't. But like. <laughs> Well, what coral is it going to eat? Like, uh, is there a way to like stop it from eating that coral? Uh, like, what do I do if it starts? Like, I don't know, man. There's so much more information than like with caution. That is the biggest garbage thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it's more of a way to me. I just, like, I'm not pulling punches today. So ah, this I is yep. more of a way for me. I think for them to say to you, uh, like. We'll sell it to you because we sell fish for a living and we can't say no. But we told you so. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't so know, you man. had a bad experience where we like, told you no, so. No, we can do so much better, you know, than that. And it's, it, especially today, fast forward 20 years or 16 years later, like, uh, we actually know very well, you know, like what mm. these fish do. And there are tons of different ways to prevent them from that behavior and how to curb it. Or Mostly how to just diet. get them out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mostly yeah. diet related. All kinds of different things. Ah. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, the reef safe with caution. I don't know. Uh, OA now is breeding fish at scale. So they're like breeding all, like every clownfish known to man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, they're creating <laughs> new clownfish out of thin air. <laughs> uh, they're also, uh, you know, breeding uh, other types of fish, but later on in later stages. I don't know. I mean, I wish that we would have done more. Uh, I don't know. This like seems like the team that was just ripe for this, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Uh, but they did. They bred a lot of fish in their the like the you know break open the ground or the path for everybody else to start thinking about, you know. Do we need to capture these fish? Well, and that's like, a, if you're capturing clownfish at this point, I don't know why. That's the conversation towards the uh, end of this decade between 2004 and 2015. I'd say, it, like, right in that when I joined uh, in, like, 2012, 2013, leading uh, and starting to gain popularity is a lot of this breeding. Breeding at home and breeding different types of species or trying to breed different, different species also. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was, like, maybe, maybe it was 2015 or maybe it was more like 16, 17, I forget, when they were really going hard on the yellow tangs, mm -hmm. Hawaiian yellow tangs and things like that. And mm -hmm. Chad has been, Chad, our customer service guy here, you know, orchid dotty backs and all kinds of different fish that he's just doing at home. Yeah, if you do it at home, man, you can do them commercially, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so in uh, uh, that, right around that part of time, man, uh, I had uh, my rasses like jumping out of my tank. <laughs> and I remember that sitting here like watching the TV and all of a sudden you'd see like the cow jump over the moon. You know, <laughs> and uh, my giant like rest. Yep. So I figured out you needed to put a lid on the tank. Uh, I started off with a black egg crate. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't like that's probably the first reason we actually brought in egg crate. I don't, I don't remember exactly, mm -hmm. but uh, black egg crate, it was hard to find, uh, but you could. Yeah. And I had a wave 
front 90, so you clipping can, it to the frame, that, that, that shape, and then around all my hang on stuff with the toll pain in the ass, <laughs> and lifting it off. And then I also found what it does is like funnels the light down mm. uh, and like it blocks the sides and stuff. Yeah. So Thick screen net top. Screen net top. I, I'm going to say actually, this is one of those things too, like another thing, man, like. You know, it was expressed to me when you buy, when I bought this uh, Lineatus RAS, like, it may jump. Mm. Garbage. Not true. It will jump. It will jump is all day long, maybe several times a day. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, it, you may get one that does or doesn't do it all the time, but if you don't put a top on the tank, this thing's dead. Mm. That is the story. Right, and so that is the level of like confidence and information that should have been shared on this fish yeah. with me. You know, yeah. like I, the May jump, that's like is not helpful, that's man. Like now I feel caution. like throwing the dice. You know, <laughs> like no, this you should plan on this fish jumping. If you don't want it to die, put on a lid. <laughs> Screen that top with caution. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh, that is the most helpful sentence possible. Now I can just choose to ignore it if I want. Yeah. But like that's way better than I don't know. Maybe he's jumper, maybe he's not. Yeah, whatever. All right. So uh, then I saw the the coolest thing I, I think maybe I've seen fish behavior to date, and this is one of those things like I wish I would have recorded this because uh, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Mm. So I got those two black and white clowns from Reed and I's uh, How to Start a Saltwater Aquarium oh, series. Oh, Fangs and Sir, Ch Sir Chomps a lot. Yep, Fangs and Sir Chomps a lot. Sir Chomps a lot still here. Yep, uh, Fang died sadly a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, Fang actually uh, came into my house and I looked and Fang is just like on the sand doing nothing, man, and just like laying there and I'm like, oh, yeah. You know what? What happened, <laughs> man? I don't know. And then. All of a sudden, uh, Sir Chomps a lot, the, the little male, comes up and like nudges him, or nudges her, up the glass, you know? And then all of a sudden, like she comes to life and starts swimming again, yeah. you know? And then she like sinks back down to the sand, and uh, like uh, Sir Chomps a lot comes back up there and like <laughs> wiggles him back up. I watched this for like 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, wow, man. Fang really cares, or Sir Chomslot really cares about Fang. <laughs> I don't think they were that, they were named that at the time. But, right, right, right. Uh, like, uh, like, I'd never seen a fish care about another fish in that manner. Like, Interesting. that it's even capable of that. Mm. Uh, and so, long story short, I actually decided to care for it in the same way that uh, Sir Chomslot did. So I scooped her out with my hand. That's how long, long gone she was. Yeah. Put her in a little acclimation box. And uh, every minute or so, I just decided to wiggle her with my finger, and she'd pop back up. And then, like a half hour later, man, she decided she was alive again and started swimming. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to this fish, uh, but I think she just needed to know somebody cared. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. It was the and weirdest thing. Lived many years after that. Yeah, yeah, many years. Transferred many tanks actually yeah. since I moved here, and ended up in this tank. Oh, so many tanks actually. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Good for so. Uh, that was uh, probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, tear to my eye right now. All uh, right, so I also around then had uh, a long nose hawkfish. Uh, I was told that this fish was kind of could be mean. Uh, I didn't know how mean it was because it was young when it was tiny. It was like it was a fine mm -hmm. guy. He just swim around and perch. Yeah. Uh, later on, he would decide that he only ate goby dinners. Uh, oh wow! And my, and my uh, fiance at the time, like, uh, like loved gobies so we made the mistake of feeding him like six gobies uh, over the course of the like, couple <laughs> years kept trying it uh and he would go in there man and he'd grab them right in the middle and like shake it back and forth like a pit bull and kill it and then it just leave it there wow he didn't even want to eat it he just didn't like gobies man get the hell out of my tank never i know the weirdest <laughs> behaviors and that's one of the things i'll get to later is some fish are just a-holes uh you know i don't know it's just like every fish has its own personality and you yep. just can't account for yep. it. You'll never know what's going to happen. Uh, you'll have to, like, you have to be ready to deal with an a-hole, though. You know? You know, <laughs> just really have to know what to do when you, when you, you know, find one. A lot of people okay. throw them in the sump. I also learned at this point that uh, there's a reason that some people say the, the Tang police are the police is because those guys protect their habitat, man. Oh, uh, tangs? Yeah. Mm. So uh, I actually like really went to town on this one. I had a yellow tang in the 90, 
And uh, I decided I really wanted a purple tang. But this guy's been in there for a year plus. Both zebra somas. Yeah. Okay. And, and so I'm like, I don't know. I just figured I was gonna try it out. Yeah. And man, he beat the hell out of him <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, wow, what's going on? How do I get him out of here? And like, I'd never caught in a fish before, and I'm like, it did not look like it was going to be easy. And then I stuck the net in, and the purple tank swam right in the net, and I got him out. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, he wanted out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, I was able to catch the yellow tang as well. And so what I did is I had those giant frag tanks down in the basement. Mm -hmm. I put the yellow tang down the basement, put the purple tang upstairs, mm -hmm. let the purple tang live around. In the, in the tank for a couple of months and then bring back. and I brought the yellow tang back except for the yellow tank yellow tang's an a-hole and uh, beat the hell out of the purple tang immediately and it, it was like it was like it was never had left the tank oh wow yeah mm. I, I don't know it's like I'm it. back in my turf man get the hell out of here yeah, yeah what are you doing here <laughs> uh, I thought you were gone Jesus. man uh, yeah I don't know so best laid plans man sometimes just don't go the way either <laughs> you just kind of got to learn uh, all right but I did learn that almost every fish protects food sources, mm. habitat, and has aggression against fish that look similar or have yeah. similar behavior. Yeah, for sure. Like mm. so, if you can imagine, the fish doesn't actually know what it looks like. Yep. Unless you've shown it a mirror and it's figured it out. Uh, it just like must have some kind of Inherently, DNA for understanding yeah. the behavior, actually. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't mm. know, but like things that eat the same way, swim the same way, use the same habitat, they have aggression. Now some of the times that aggression is I'm gonna beat the ever living hell out of you and kill you if I can. And sometimes it's, I'm just gonna show you who's boss. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you can live you in my tank. You might get beat up a little bit and then after yeah. you figure it out, we're fine. I think we've all met people like that too. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> in, our, in our lives. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, it just you never know. It's just like a person, really. Uh, you just every personality is different, and you just don't really know. But if you're going after my lunch, that's my lunch bag. Why you think? Why are you in there? You better you know, stop. Get the hell out of there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right. So one of the things that I, I learned too was really minimal thought goes into natural habitat. Mm. Uh, like, you know, there's a lot of thought about which fish are compatible with each other and, you know, how many fish you can have. Yeah. But nobody's really thinking that much. You know, there's some obvious ones like this like, is a sand sifting oh. goby or whatever. Yeah, and there's obvious, well, there's other obvious ones that you don't have to, but hey, I've got two clams and I want to put in a, like an anemone or something. Mm -hmm. Give them a place to host or something like that. Yep. That's like yeah. the major, the most of the thought that I've ever put into habitat matching fish well, or it's not natural environment. Clear if you like go against this, like so if you have a wrasse that like lives and sleeps or sleeps in the sand, uh, what happens if you don't have sand? Yeah, what it is is really sad, man. They'll have bashed in faces because they keep trying, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so it's their natural habitat or like way to sleep that way. Uh, and so like, I don't know, it's just not explained. Uh, like, mm -hmm. especially like when you're going down that matrix of things to learn about the fish from wherever you're learning about fish, it doesn't say this thing prefers small holes and lots of them yep. near the ground, yep. you know, or this thing prefers open swimming area and like it prefers the dark, it prefers cooler water, it prefers like it does, it, like it really, the doesn't really say the, the, all the detail as much mm. as you'd like. And the information exists. So really, like, there's been enough people keeping these fish for a long enough time that somebody knows. I, I don't know. It's like selling a car and like hand somebody keys and like, yeah, it's a car. You figure out the rest. <laughs> like, why, 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 man? Tell Come me on, you can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll go buy from somebody who can tell me. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I would like to do better than that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyway. 2004, uh, 2015. We're still cl plugging along here. And... Uh, number 15. Number 15. Uh, minimal thoughts going into diet, this too. Most of it's still going into nutrition. Probably or nutrients. A, probably a big, big, the, one of the biggest leaps between 2015 and now. That yeah. We're, that we're learning. Yeah, I don't know, man. Nobody's really, nobody's really talking about yeah. diet. I mean, when I say Mice nobody, Q, it's a, a small conversation within the big city. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, some cubes and mice is still, and some nori sheets for the tanks. You know, like, what are they, what are they, what's all the I best need. food out there? And the answer is whatever I use. 
<laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Like I, I just used mysis and it wasn't it. even until much later. And like one of the easiest ways to figure that out is just look at protein and fat content because you're looking for energy and ability to build tissue, uh, and uh, then look at the ingredients. And if the first thing is corn and the second one's wheat, I don't know. My fish don't eat that, so uh, mm. I don't know. Like. But nobody's really putting in the, the like frequency and like things like oh my chromis just die and my antheus just mm-hmm. die, and then the exact same conversation. It's like yeah, I only feed every three days, you know, because like, my fish don't need that. Because I got algae problems. No, like they're like oh, yeah, many of these fish are uh, predators that capture big food and then they don't need to eat for three days. Or right? like yeah, but many of them are super active, burn a lot of calories, and they eat like a microphone all day long. And you got both of things. both types in your same tank. Yeah, like uh, nobody's really shared the information, uh, and then to be successful, it's just like this one big garbage pit of like advice for all fish. <laughs> I don't know. It's like trying to teach you what's required to like. Uh, maintain a giraffe and a household cat at the same time. Like it's not even the same conversation, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, like both mammals. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so uh, not a lot goes into diet yet. That will change mm-hmm. as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Now this one was a really big one. So uh, uh, this one was a, a, a revolutionary for me. And I don't know. It wasn't probably the most popular series you ever did because it was like a finite thing. But the Clown Harem series was yeah. a huge, huge, huge lesson for me. Uh, and this is the primary reason why it was a huge lesson. Because it was something that I was really interested in. I, I get really interested in natural behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like, like watching uh, the, like the shrimp and the goby. I really like well, talking about the butt fish and the cucumber. <laughs> and like, I, like, well, I like thinking about the, the ways that things interact with each other, the pom-pom crab and the little yeah. anemones and all that kind of stuff. And so like, once I found out that you know, uh, often in the wild, the way that the clownfish actually you know, lives is a, a you know, female, a male, subdominant fa- uh, males, and then a bunch of other little males that are around just waiting for somebody to die. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Uh, and they're like, this is the natural way. Well, like, why are they not that way in the tank? And I would later find out that, like, in the wild, there's so much aggression in that whole matrix that, but there's like a whole ocean to get away from yeah, it. Yeah. There's you know? tons of room to she's, she's mad today, dude. Tons just stay of away. Food. You know, I don't know. Like <laughs> if the male's being aggressive today, just stay away. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, but this is what I found is like, it's not that it can't be done. Let's teach people how it can be done. Yeah. Right? And so I read and read and read and read. And then there was one guy, like, uh, I forget his name, but oh, he, yeah. like Go, watch, 30 Clownfish. Yeah. The last episode, the wrap up episode of that four, after mm. four and a half years is yeah, uh, great. Know. Well, this guy has 30 Clownfishes and he doc- documents it for years, you yep. know. And I read like 60 pages of this guy's journey, you know, to understand mm. like the different points in what he may have done or may, may have done wrong, done right. And then it all like really just came clear to me. It's all just about managing aggression, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's all the same stuff that we all get mad about, which is uh, food aggression. If I'm hungry and you have food or food is limited, man, you and me aren't friends. I'm gonna, we're yeah, gonna fight. Like me and my family are Dog gonna boat. eat before your family. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, if there's ample food to the point that like I will never worry about food, eh. Uh, food's no longer a reason for me to be to, mad at you anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, uh, filtration also now needs to support that. So if I'm gonna put an auto feeder on there that feeds these fish uh, every other hour, you know, three, four times a day, mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna pollute the water, or I need to export it. And that was one of the areas where we really found the refugium to be one of the best solutions. This is pre-refugium conversations, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably one of the things that spurred the whole thing is uh, like, hey, we got the skimmer, we got all this other stuff, but we're feeding more here than we've ever fed before. And we were actually doing really big water changes too at the time. That's true. Uh, but all of a sudden we found like, man, this, this refugium is just really taking off uh, and it's taking up most of the nutrient from all that fish, uh, fish food. So uh, also we found habitat aggression. So mm. in a tank where there is very little habitat, 
And habitat can be a lot of different things. You know, it can be like, make this like fish big, likes giant tank. Could it, be it could be like he likes tiny little holes, and there's only so many little holes in this tank. It could be he likes big holes. It could be like I like to sit over, underneath an overhang. Mm -hmm. It could be in this case, I like to sit inside of an anemone. Yeah. Uh, and so what we found was if we put in a ton, a ton, a ton of en anemones in there, everybody's got uh, a place. Yeah. Uh, everybody's got a house. There's prime houses, and people fight over who gets the best house, <laughs> which is life. But uh, <laughs> like, they're largely just kind of skirting around because they can just go to another really prime habitat, yeah. and no longer now an issue. Uh, we also found that if you put them all in there when they're young, like tiny little guys from the same clutch, they figure out their aggression when they're small rather than when they're big. Yeah. You know? Mm. Uh, and they seem to know they're from their own family and that kind of stuff. So, you know, we didn't have the aggression from uh, growing up in the same way. We did find out that anything that looks different it gets aggression. That's kind of nature. Like, you see this everywhere. But, right. Uh, there was one clownfish whose face wouldn't change from orange to black over time, and man, did he get picked on. <laughs> Uh, it was interesting too because we took him out and we put him in another tank and then the bully often becomes the bully and he was a big bully there. Yeah. But eventually his face turned black, we put him back in the tank and nobody mm. cared about him again. There was one one little clown out of that whole thing that oh. stayed a runt and he's still alive. He's in the Red Sea Max back uh, behind this wall back here. Mm -hmm. Lou. Little, yeah, <laughs> little tiny runt, didn't grow back past any like year maybe uh, however he big he was after a year the rest got massive there's a bunch they're still all over the uh, office here but uh, we got tons of them everywhere like everybody's got a pair there's two in my tank uh so yeah lou i always thought lou was the smartest fish in the whole tank that little tank yeah guy. because he chose to not grow up and <laughs> nobody ever bothered him he was the least of concerns yeah. for the whole thing. so he never got He's to be the boss of the tank but nobody ever bothered him yep <laughs> Lou, Good man. for him. Nah, yeah, Lou. He's still over there. Okay, right. so the, that's what we learned, though, is that if you take the challenges with something and then you address them, uh, the chances of success uh, go really high. And now, instead of listening to people tell you you can't have uh, uh, a hair with a, a fish, you can't yeah. have three, I'm telling you, you can have 30. In fact, I'm pretty certain you, uh, one of the pieces that we missed, actually, is uh, aggression distribution. Mm. That if I had only put in uh, eight, it might not have worked out. Right. Because when there was 30 of them... It's like, it hard just, to know who to be mad at. Yeah, and you chase them off, you pick a new one. So the bully just kind of spreads out his bully amongst so all yeah, of it. Yeah, they're just know? fine. Yeah, and so 60 might have been even better. You know, <laughs> who knows? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was one of the things man, I learned in, in that period of time is let's not worry about what people tell you you can't do. Do the research. And to be fair... Like, it took me a long time to read 30 pages and really digest what worked for this person. But when he did, I felt prepared, mm -hmm. you know? And then we shared it with the universe. And then we shared two years of uh, success, or maybe it was actually four years. Four and a half was the last one. Four and a half was the last episode. Yeah, so we showed you yep. four and a half years of uh, how this panned out so you could see it and, like, re see the results of, of putting in that kind of effort. Check out that playlist. All right. So some fish now have been with me for 15 years. Uh, longer than any other pet that I, I've ever cared for. And one of them is actually sitting in a uh, uh, purchasing desk. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he's that little naked clown. Oh, that orange one. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, so he's been sitting in there. So he's outlived all of my dogs, all yeah. of my cats, you know, everything else. Uh, if he's not a pet, I, I don't know what is. Yeah. Uh, and I just, uh, the only reason that he's not made it at home is because he seems happy where he's at. So, you yep. know, why mess up his Yeah, day? there's probably been five or six different people taking care of him throughout his life. Yeah, I don't know. But he's happy where he's at right now, so why mess up his day? But I've had pets, man, that have lasted longer than, like, a any other uh, animal I've cared for. And it's like, you start to realize, like, ah. You know, and like we raised those, those, you know, all the black and white clowns, uh, and now you get to see them like all over the whole building, you know, and they've been with us now for, mm. gosh, man, it must be close to 10 years now. I don't know, eight years at least. 
Oh, for which ones? The the, the black harem? and white clown, the oh, harems. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's seven years. They but also had babies too. Like Chad took a pair. Oh, yeah. Chad took some eggs home. Harvest. No, 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 no. That was uh, Sir Chomps a lot. Uh, Fangs yeah. babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yep, it was. We did have those. I don't know, but uh, we're definitely. This is uh, these these animals. I mean, like I remember Lou's name. He's in the uh, like. It, it, <laughs> you know, he's I don't know. He's part of the whole thing. Uh, okay, so uh, eighteen. 18 here is online better i'm going to tell you at this point i believe that online is buying my fish online is better than a bad fish store mm. right yeah and this is why is because i know what the wholesalers look like i mean it looked like what you would imagine a whole bunch of fish coming into a wholesaler and then shipping back out to local fish stores you know it's kind of a facility yeah, yeah. uh all right so what you don't know is a lot of the online uh, shippers actually ship straight from those wholesalers. Oh, right? you, you order it and then it goes from, it came off of the boat into California, California to you. Yeah, so the yeah. wholesalers are effectively like uh, drop shipping for the, right. for the online guys, right? So that means that it's really had the least amount of interaction and uh, shipping and transport and exposure to other yeah. fish. Now, I'm not going to tell you that like it definitely means it's better or anything, but if I'm looking at a bad fish store, for sure online I feel like I'm getting a healthier pet. Yeah. Right? Mm. Now, the inverse of that. Uh, online is definitely worse than a good fish store. Oh, yeah. And you'll know. I mean, you, 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 you know your fish stores uh, locally. You know you've talked to them. You know how they care for them. You know, like, uh, how often you see dead fish in there and, and do, do people just walk by it and just mm -hmm. leave it in there? Mm -hmm. uh, is there ick everywhere? Is there aptasia everywhere? Uh, is the, like, you know, when my friend once said to me, clean is synonymous with well cared for. Mm. So if the tanks all look like trash, you know exactly how well these animals are taken care of. Right. Uh, and I clean is synonymous well care for. It doesn't just apply to pets. It probably applies to like almost everything in life. Oh, probably. Uh, but definitely here. So like you already know. So if you walk in your fish store, it's clean. Everything's healthy. You know the people talk about with confidence, and you know they've actually medicated and they actually have observed the fish. And if you saw a sick one, they would stop you from buying it. Not mm. think, oh man, good luck. We get rid of this one. Yeah. You know? uh, that place is way better. Buy there or don't buy online. That if you have that local to you, uh, it's worth the extra money for sure. Yeah. Uh, so. I don't know, but that's kind of what I learned at this point is it's not an answer of it, should I buy online or should I buy at the local fish store. Uh, it depends on the quality of the two places that you're buying from. You know, I, yeah. I don't know, you know, like the, the store that you chose. Uh, all right. I'm also learning definitely at this point that diet matters, you know, and so mm -hmm. diet, attention to detail in terms of what I feed these guys produces totally different results. Mm -hmm. You know, feeding the algae to a tang that literally eats algae all day long. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, it's not gonna live on mice or shrimp forever. It's kind of akin to the opposite of like feeding your cat, uh, you know, alley cat, which is like corn and rice and bran meal. Like, like, like this cat doesn't eat, it didn't grow a, a <laughs> digestive tract to desire to eat cornmeal or whatever. Yeah. And like, I don't know, you, people could debate whether or not they were designed to eat meat only or if it's a hybrid or whatever it is, I don't know. But it definitely wasn't primarily that. No. So if you go snorkeling, you don't see a, a, a tank chasing down shrimp and stuff. You see them eating algae all day oh, long. Pecking at rocks, right? pecking at sand. Yeah, and so if you just feed them brine shrimp, this is a nutritionally incomplete food for their natural diet. Mm. Like they've spent a millennia, you know, adjusting to. And it's not even something we're debating. Like it's, I know this to be true. Uh, <laughs> you, go Google tang, yellow tang and all you'll see is them eating algae all day long. <laughs> and so, and, and the difference in price of what you feed them is nothing. No. It might, the norm cheaper, might be cheaper. Actually. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't like, so the only difference is do you care? Or, mm. or, or did somebody bother to tell you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. So diet matters. So frequency, the amount you're feeding and what you're feeding absolutely has an impact on the health and longevity of the pet, as well as specifically on like a, how well it fends off illness and stuff that you probably haven't uh, treated that's for. That's a big one. Yeah. That, that's what we learned here in, coming up in 2020. Oh. Is the, uh, the way mm -hmm. to uh, fend, ward off some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, wholesalers, I mean, sorry wholesalers. Wholesalers have ick in all diseases. They have uh, velvet, they have ick, they have uh, every disease known to man. And the reason for that is because there's 8 million fish going in, in and out of there. And, 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 and that's the way it is. Yeah, everybody gets uh, exposed. Okay, so it is not because they're bad people. So don't say that like, oh, you know, that company's terrible. I, yeah. should, uh, I shouldn't have I've ever done that, blah, blah, blah. It's just a reality of the situation, of the like the distribution network that is developed in our industry. Yeah. That that there's going to be some amount of sickness in you know those fishes or parasites. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you, if you want to know who to blame uh, for that, uh, raise your hand. It's me. Yeah, no, it's all of us, man. Because largely it's uh, based on uh, results of what pet owners are willing to pay for the fish. Mm -hmm. You know, I've actually had this conversation recently with one of them, and I'm like, I really want to get to the point where, like, can't we, you know, proactively medicate and quarantine all these fish for three, four weeks, you know, and I don't care. Like, you can buy the cheapest fish anywhere else, right, if you yeah. want. But, like, can't we do this and then just charge appropriately? And, like, dude, nobody's ever going to pay. Nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's ever mm -hmm. going to pay. And they're like, wow, that's such a sad thing. And I don't, I don't agree. Because there was a time, man, where you know, people would buy a $300 puppy from the puppy mill and now, you know, uh, spending 900 bucks from a good breeder, and, yeah. you know, 2,500 from the, like, you know, championship parents or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You know, like, those are things. Like, the $300 pet is actually, uh, like, a purebred anyway. It's, like, a really rare thing. Yeah. So, yeah. like, this would be the only pet industry where the pet owners said, I don't care. I just want the cheapest available pet possible. Which is, yeah, would be the I, only I, pet industry. And this would be the only one. Yeah. I just don't think it's because nobody's ever made it available. Hmm. And now maybe I'm wrong. And I, I, like, I can't wait to hear what all of you guys say. I'm going to go back through the comments here and, and read it. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I don't know what, what the cost is, but like, do we want the cheapest available pets known to man? Like the only thing that matters, it's just a commodity. I might as well be buying a filet of tuna at the grocery store. Mm. Uh, or am I buying a pet that I want to be healthy and I don't want my other pets to get sick? And this matters to me and I'm willing to pay a little extra for it. I don't know. Uh, that probably feeds into why, you know, why a lot of people don't treat their fish like pets because of their cost. Okay, so I'm actually going to flip on this all the way the other direction. Yeah. I think the wholesalers should just stay the way they are, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and this is why. I think that this is the biggest opportunity probably out there for local fish stores. Yeah, man. you want your million dollar idea? Yeah, here's a million dollar idea, like for Early. everybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like, these are the people that the local fish store it has the opportunity to educate, has the opportunity to provide you know, health for the animal. They can charge for it because they have a personal experience that's attached to it that just doesn't exist in, uh, online. Mm. Uh, and they can explain why this is better and why your pets will live longer, they'll be happier, and they won't get your other pets sick, yeah. right? And they can do it well in a small format because the reality is, is like this place is turning and burning through tons and tons and tons of fish. We'll never be able to do this at that, you know. Right. But at a local fish store, at least a portion of the store can be dedicated to you know, a higher degree. And you can always sell the lower cost fish and then teach people how to do proper quarantine at home. So I can have best of both worlds. I can yeah. have the inexpensive thing that I can bring it home, but also for people that either don't know how to do it and don't want to kill fish or have the uh, desire or ability, uh, like, uh, like uh, I think mm. that would be one of the biggest reasons to buy and go and visit a pet store, and it would make me want to buy everything else there. Screw bulk if resupply. If they were doing that? Yeah, screw yeah. bulk resupply. I want to buy from the guy, man, <laughs> that got me the best pets, you know, and mm -hmm. really cares and helps me. And I'm totally okay with, uh, with that. I want to support that all the way. Uh, and so, I don't know. So that's why I think actually at the wholesale level isn't the place to do it. It's actually at the fish store. Let the fish stores continue to buy the fish at a mm -hmm. reasonable cost uh, and then bring them in and quarantine them properly, medicate them, get rid of it, and then help you uh, have success. I think that the, for the future, one of the most positive, beneficial things uh, that all could around. ever happen to our industry. For the fish, for uh, the owners, yep. All right. So, uh, 
Uh, I will say also that there are a chance for some of the online places to do this too, actually. Well, so you can even start an online just with only that. This. Right? Like, so yeah. like uh, Elliot, the guy I get my fish, he's kind of smaller scale and you know, like boutique for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, he, could, he you could do stuff like this. And I'd like, maybe you have tons of little ones that do mm. this kind of stuff mm. online too. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, but like even the big ones, I'm gonna say, I've said, you've, you've heard me say this before, but there isn't a single industry out there, any pet industry, where the place that sells the most pets and the cheapest pets the provides popular. the healthiest pets. Yeah. Does not exist. <laughs> no. It's, it never will ever, ever be the case, mm -mm. you know? Uh, but I don't think that that has to be that way in this industry. I think this is one of those unique industries where that could be the case. You can solve it. I think that because, you know, reefers are so passionate about the, their tanks and the animals that they care for, like, there's such a market for healthy pets and the desire to do this right. And I'm committed to this for 10, 15 years. Like, I think this is an area where, you know, somebody uh, could, an existing one or a new one, come, come out and say, we're gonna change the way that this is done. Yeah. Right? Mm. And uh, everything that you buy from us definitely costs more than you buy it anywhere else. But this is what you get. This is when why. You're yeah. 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 If you can explain to me why I'm paying more. Yeah. And like you can decide for yourself which one you want. Mm. Uh, and again, I think the biggest thing I, coupled with that is actually providing the information so you can do it yourself. So both options exist in the world, but both of them lead to healthy pets. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. All right. So that was 2004 to 2015, right? Yeah. Do we All still right. sit there today? All right. So now we're at 2020. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that did I run out of the all? Whole, yeah, that's the whole 2020. Okay, so we're on to 2020. All right, so on to 2020. This is what we know today as we sit here. Uh, like Locked. now, I've learned so much uh, in the last 16 years. Uh, I've learned how to uh, take care of fish in, in a totally different manner. And I'm still learning. One of the things you're gonna learn uh, is uh, I killed two fish the other day. Mm. And I would say that the fish killed the other fish, but it was my lack of knowledge on how to solve that issue that killed them. It wasn't the other fish. I spent uh, hours talking to, uh, 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 to Elliot on the phone about like, how do we solve not just this one, but how do we solve it for the future? And I, I like, this is one of the things, by the way, where it's really hard for me to talk about because nobody wants to come out and say, I killed my pets. Yeah. And that's part of the reason that we especially, don't evolve. Especially while you sit here today saying, we should all be more uh, mindful of our pets. They should be pets. Like, well, and then this guy kills them? And then, and then yeah. you killed? You, what do you mean? You killed some? Yeah. yeah that's a I hard mean, pill to swallow. So like, I, I showed pictures of, uh, mm. uh, of the fish bags going in, and then you know, I'll tell, share with you in a minute what happened. But like, then what do I do, man? Like I now I'm on Facebook and I gotta come back and say, you remember that excitement that I built up a minute ago? Died. People don't do that. People <laughs> I like, and so I, I guess I do. Right. But like I, the reason that <clears throat> I, I like sometimes I just gotta find a motivation. And still so still learning lessons. For me, the motivation is still after 16 years, I'm still learning yeah. lessons. Yeah. And if the only thing I can do is pass on some of those lessons to other people. I'll actually save exponentially amount of uh, number of fish through that lesson. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's the only thing I can tell myself to, <laughs> to get past uh, some yeah. of the stuff because it, it just like sucks, man, to mm. keep learning lessons over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, it's like your oxygen thing. It's yeah. just there's no end to it. Uh, but it, you just keep keep getting past one after another. Uh, all right. So here it is. Uh, you're gonna hear about all that stuff uh, coming up here. And so in 2020. One of the things you see change mm. is a focus on utilitarian fish. There was very specific, you know, points in time and and like tipping points uh, where we learned just a whole. We took about a whole lot of information. The teaming up at WWC for the BRS WWC hybrid uh, method was one of the things that we pulled a ton of nuggets of information out. This is one of them. Uh, this. Using you know the tangs and the and not just the tangs but a, a variety of different fish for a job. Give your tang and get you, give your fish a job. 
So we did this in the, the five minute guide mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about it in like in a 40 gallon breeder and mm -hmm. like the E170, it's like get a here's, tang, get a, a list different of types fish. of tang, yeah. uh, get an Aptasia eating file fish even mm -hmm. though you don't have Aptasia yet because you're probably going to introduce it and you may never even know it if yeah. he's in there. Yeah. Get a you rass. Know, get a rass that likes to eat uh, you know, parasitic copepods mm -hmm. and nudibranchs and all that stuff. Uh, I, just get those things and if you have the fish beforehand, you may never even know you have those pests. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, so at this point, if anybody that I cared about came and told me, like, I want to set up a reef tank, I wouldn't let them set up a tank that wasn't large enough to have a couple tanks in it. Yep. My, my mom actually uh, went and got her first fish on Sunday, a couple days ago, a few days ago. And she said, I went back and watched the f five minute guide videos and I decided I'm gonna get the fish that Ryan said to get. So <laughs> she ended up with two, uh, two yellow tangs. She did get a couple clowns, but her first four fish were two yellow. She's like, should yeah. I get the yellow tangs first? Yeah, I should get, yeah. I said, yeah, you should probably That's get That's awesome, man. But yeah, yeah. You, mean, uh, you, you tell a utilitarian <laughs> fish, utilitarian fish. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, so, yeah, utilitarian fish specifically, and I really, really, I mean that. Like, I, if somebody was brand new to the hobby and they're looking for advice, I would say I believe so much in the algae eating tanks that get a tank mm. that is big enough to house them uh, and you'll have way bigger success. That one thing alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's their job. Their and job is to sit around and walk around and or everybody, around. It's inevitable for everybody to go through some kind of like ugly brown, algae kind of phase, and you can really, and it, uh, for some people, it probably is the saving grace to keep you in the hobby. Mm -hmm. Next one, 2020. Skip difficult fish uh, yeah. unless you're prepared and committed. Yeah. Like, it's, you, you're buying a fish for the long haul, and you got to come to terms with, if this has special feeding habits, if it has special care factors, you're gonna be doing this for the next 10 years. Okay, so uh, this should go on the websites too. Should not say expert only. It should say this fish has an 80% mortality rate mm -hmm. uh, in reef tanks and it's because people do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. If you don't do X, Y, and Z, or you do Y and, or uh, F and N or whatever, <laughs> uh, you, will be successful. So uh, I'm going to make this up, but like your copper band butterfly, you know, I saw somebody be successful with one of these because he created a little contraption that only he could eat out of. Yeah. You know, it had a little hole in it that he routed out. He didn't drill it because the drill would have been too sharp. He routed it, it was all smooth and everything. Mm -hmm. And had little tubes in it and he would feed the mysis in it and the fish rapidly figured out they couldn't get it out of there. And so he could swim up there and eat out of those little holes anytime uh, he wanted. Yeah. And you know what? Worked he just was fine. successful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so he also didn't have, he had areas of the tank that were uh, like flow that, you know, didn't spook or freak the fish yeah. out. And like, you yeah. Know, I, so it's like expert only isn't advice. It's like. That means nothing. You know what? It, it means often to most people, it means like, well, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I'm, Let's I, just throw the guy dice and gamble. I think I'm an expert. Yeah, I, yeah. I've been doing this 20 years, uh, of course. I think I, I'm I, an I, expert. I don't know, what, what, no, not, there's a, something about this thing that's actually harder than others. Yeah. Uh, well, you learned that lesson, too, with the, your twin mm. spot gobies, too. Yeah, I learned, and that actually is my fault. Mm. Uh, and so, because I tried the, the twin spot gobies. I just really, really wanted to be successful with something called four-wheel gobies with yeah. twin spot. I just really wanted to be successful with them, and I was. As long as uh, I was willing to feed the the sand in front of them, like eggs and mm -hmm. reef chili and all that stuff, and I just put a tube on it and squeeze this bottle and it would feed. Before you know it, they would come and filter feed it like right out of uh, uh, the sand right in front of it. So I could just kind of spray it in there and they would, <laughs> yeah, it was like a totally different way of feeding, you know, because they, they wouldn't eat it out of the bottle. And if they tried to go get you know, like uh, um, the shrimp out of the thin air or the like mysis, they'd just like gum it and it, like clearly wasn't their like natural diet. Right. And then it was actually the six line wrasse that killed him. It wasn't the fact lack of feeding. But yeah. if I'm being honest with you, I'm a pretty busy person. So even yeah. thinking back now, would you have been able to keep that would up Would I for? have fed them every day that way for the next 10 years? If I'm being honest, I have to say I would. You would have passed the baton yeah. on to Josh. So in this case, Josh would have done it. It would have been just fine. But, <laughs> but even if, if I was talking home, about even my at house, your own home, yeah, yeah if you I was talking about my house, man, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so 
Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Mm. I, I saw like a little comment there. What's up? Oh, oh, I don't know. He was spinning around there. I thought he was trying to tell us <laughs> something. Uh, all right, so uh, I will also tell you that I found that big batches of fish often do better than small. Oh, uh, I mean, you mean add, like adding them all at once, mm -hmm. or like a harem, or no, adding them all at once. Yeah. So like. Uh, and you're, I'm going to find you an arrow right now that I'd like, there's some reasons why I'd like to add new fish every week, which are bad reasons, and I'll share with you uh, in, a, in a little bit. But uh, uh, when you, and that was one of the things, maybe the reasons I, I never had problems uh, with other tanks is I would order online, and because I'm getting free shipping, I'm ordering a lot more fish than I'm told, because I'm told like never order more two fish at one time oh. or whatever, right? So you only have to pay the shipping fee one time, but yeah. you can get more, more than one fish. Yeah, well, and then I got to get over a ship for shipping threshold too or something, you know. Uh -huh. And at the time it was like 250 bucks, not mm -hmm. 175. It was harder to do, and so I would add, you know, five fish at a time. And I never had aggression issues when I was, you know, young for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. the two tangs was one of them, but for the most part, I just like really. Especially when I was introducing them, it just was like they'd figure a squad out and they'd be done. Yeah. But I think it was because I was adding a lot of them at a time. Uh, everybody's on the figure out mode right now, so yeah. there's no no chance for aggression or less chance for aggression. Well, also kind of like the clowns too, like the aggression is dispersed. There's five new members in this tank, yeah. and yeah. so the bully of the tank will spread it out. Sometimes they'll figure out who they want to pick on the most, but <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm finding that actually big batches of fish. In fact, somebody who heard about my problem the other day said I should have Elliot hold all of my fish. Yeah, in I saw and that ship comment. Them all at once. Yeah, have yeah. them just ship them all at one time. Uh, and it, I'm I like other than maybe the cycle portion of that, which I'm learning actually is probably in our, in our some of our experiences experiments not as big of a deal as you think, yeah. but. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I I kind of agree, and that's actually what uh, Elliot said. Is he he? If it was him, he would have had a whole bunch of tanks there, and he'd be collecting them all, and then he'd add them all at once, and you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. Uh, but like, there's different reasons to do different things. Uh, all right. So you're also finding that uh, uh, do-it-yourself foods are becoming more popular yeah. in 2020. 2020 mm -hmm. DIY foods, like so much so that. Uh, first, we just played with it with the CS team and kind of making our own stuff. Mm -hmm. But you also have like people who are uh, are doing this or have been doing this, and it's catching on. So like Rod's food, and he's Rod's got you know a carnival blend, a carnivore blend, a herbivore blend, and he's got you know the regular original blend and things like that. But like, they're really popular type mixes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, you know like it's just. You know, like you see it at uh, the Worldwide Corals guys, right? They were feeding this stuff that like uh, multiple one. times a yeah. day. And it was just all this blended up, you know, seafood, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they put in the, uh, like, omegas and, you know, meals yeah, and stuff. Yeah, another eye-opening event when we were back there watching them make their own food. And they're like, oh, here's some uh, amino acids and here's some coral aminos. They're like, huh. Mm. Why would you put that in there? Yep. Interesting. So, yeah, uh, but you're seeing that, that, like, that has become, not only is it cheaper, but it's better. It's almost like the, uh, uh, like for sure with my cat, you know, I was feeding the cat uh, just a like ground up chicken. They yeah. like throw some vitamin mix and the whole chicken beak and all or whatever in there. And uh, man, like A, I've never seen him healthier. I've never seen him happier. He pooped way less and they didn't stink. <laughs> there you go. All good for me. Oh. <laughs> uh, and whatever, whatever he's doing is good here. So here you're taking a whole, you know, shrimp and all kinds of uh, different things and you're blending in there. It feels good. It's a great project to do. It's mm. fun. And you know, you really feel like you're doing something that feeding brine shrimp doesn't do. Yeah, yeah, even that, mice is just shrimp. a you know? cube of the same food every single day. But mm -hmm. then you do a, a DIY batch, and you know all of the mm -hmm. ingredients that went in there, like almost a dozen, and then you feel better about you it. You guys will actually probably think this is funny because you know you just you don't always follow your own advice. <laughs> uh, so uh, I got these new uh, Antheas and like. There were different antheas. Uh, they're deep water antheas and they feed mm -hmm. on large prey. And so I was trying to feed them the same things that I would normally feed, which is like mysis and then like the calanus and like tiny little small pellets. And it's yeah, like, for uh -uh. And most antheas have and, small mouths. Yeah, and then I found out that I talked to, to Elliot and he's like, oh no, dude, these guys eat krill. Oh. And I'm like, dude, it's a 
it's an antia, dude. And he's like, yeah, these are 500 foot deep antias. They're, they're, not, they're not eating uh, the they, same things. They're that, eating steaks. Yeah, no. they eat, and like, yeah. sure enough, man, I added krill, and you, they go swallow the whole thing. And it's like, I couldn't believe it could even fit in their mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, man. And then I added some other fish to the tank, and mm -hmm. like, you know, everybody's eating. And it's funny now, though, like, it's funny how fish behave with each other, mm -hmm. because now those antias will eat anything because mm -hmm. the other fish are eating it, and there's a tendency to go after it, like the thing uh, that everybody else is. Yeah. yeah. So they eat anything, but I tried a bunch of pellets. So some of them worked, some of them didn't. I tried uh, different foods, and you know what? The, uh, they get the most excited about for sure. Big giant krill. Mm -mm. What? Uh, it's a uh, uh, Rod's food. Dude. Oh, really? The red one. I don't know. I don't know what blend it is, but it's uh, the it's red one. It's got good big chunks in it. And everything it's got all too. kinds of chunks. It's, it's got, got the yeah. krill in it. Mm -hmm. It's got the little mysis in there. It's yeah. got all kinds of like. It's got uh, flakes of uh, nori in it and the whole thing. Very and diet. They by far go the most aggressive after that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, well, of course. That makes I mean, sense. I've been talking about this forever. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, but at home, you know. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, DIY foods are more popular, and I'll say Rod's food. It falls for me falls in the DIY food. You read it: whole shrimp, whole krill, yeah. whole you know, like yeah. uh, he's doing uh, oyster. We, he's oh. doing what we did, uh, but at home. Yep. Yeah, but it skips the stink in yeah. your house and puts it in a pack for you. Uh, more fish are being bred now. You're seeing yellow tangs uh, being bred. Uh, I got some uh, uh, anthias that I'm going to not tell you guys about yet, uh, but they've been bred and they're coming to my house Captain pretty soon. Bread. Uh, they're really cool. I can't there's wait for you to see them. A, there's a long, there is a lo growing laundry list of yeah. things that are being captive bred. You're seeing like these masked angels, angel fish being bred, like fish that are really uh, mm. difficult to capture. Also, don't like you know do very well when you're like you know bringing them up uh, 300 feet. I saw some clarion angels the other day. I think they were uh, uh, bred. Yeah. You know, like so like. You're seeing people breed all kinds of things that weren't being bred before. Being more successful at Skill it. Skill sets growing, man. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, there are, a lot of them are really expensive, but you're going to see, I think, you know, demand for some of these things and it will yeah. grow. Uh, so 2020, uh, more curated experiences are available. So I'm just going to explain, you know, basically what happens when I talk to uh, Elliot. I call Ellie up, I tell him what I, my tank is, I tell him like, you know, what I want, what I'm looking for. He tells me five of those things are stupid ideas. Don't do that, Ryan. <laughs> uh, which is what I want, man. You know, I don't want people to let me make the same mistakes I've made before. Yeah. And then when he tells Just, me why, I'm like, ah, oh, thank you, man. Yeah. That was actually like, really good. I, I never thought about that way before. I take you know? a, a, an expert. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I run into challenges and I kill two of the fish that we'll get to again in a second. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, I, what am I going to do here, man? Like, uh, I'm building an I've never ISA. had this problem. And, it, and the, the, the last thing I ever thought was two little Johnson wrasses the size of half my pinky were going to kill two wrasses this big, you know, in a 360-gallon <laughs> tank. <laughs> But I never had that kind of problem in a 90 gallon tank. Like, well, I never, in a, never in a million years would, it, would I thought that was going to happen. Yeah. I now kind of know why, uh, and I also know what to do about it. Uh, that's a curated experience. It definitely costs more, uh, but like, valuable. It's available now. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. There's other places out there. Maybe some people can chime in. But uh, Marine Collectors is one of them with Elliot. And then you can, you know, there's other places similar to what he does. I think you're going to see more and more of those uh, people bringing these fish in and, uh, you know, providing, you know, kind of like your breeder level experience, like right. where you're buying this thing from uh, your AKC mm -hmm. triple time award winner German Shepherd. You know, lineage name. Yeah, lineage. He comes from uh, from Scotland. He, I know his parents. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, you're also seeing now an overwhelming amount of information on quarantining tanks. Not as much the, that we hope for in the future, but there's no. a lot. There's a heck no, of a lot more. No, if you go look now, there's direct things. Yeah. So when I went looking before, it was just this collage of crap that you had to reassemble yourself. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Now. If you know where plans. to look, yeah. if somebody's nice enough to show you where to look, I can go find, you know, Humble Fish's articles or somebody similar to him and get very distinct advice, mm. do this this way in these steps. Yeah. Mm. It's good. Yeah. Now exists. 
That isn't widely distributed because text just isn't that widely distributed <laughs> uh, in many cases. But uh, yeah, it, it uh, exists on the planet now. Uh, thank you to the people, Humblefish, I'm, I know I'm forgetting others out there, but thank you very much. Uh, and uh, there's also healthy information about hospital tanks, which are different. So quarantining, I'm going to treat for like a broad spectrum of right, stuff. Right. You know, hospital tank means my sick is my 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 fish is sick. I identify what it is, and then I treat for that specific thing correctly. There you go. That's difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, especially with the identification, a lot of it is hard to identify for some people. It's if you've never so ran into it before, easy to misidentify yep. book versus velvet. You know. Yeah. Uh, once you know what to look for, it's super easy to see the difference between you know velvet and ick, and like it looks different on different fishes, and mm. like uh, you know, I, I don't know. It is definitely a skill. I would say if you master quarantining and you master uh, hospital tanks. You're essentially a fish veterinarian. Yeah, more, more or less. And you and you have gone to the school of this. You've researched it. You didn't get the degree, but you did the same amount of work. Mm. You know, especially if you worked in a fish store and everything doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think you could take your fish to your uh, like dog or cat vet or your local vet and have them have the mm. same amount of knowledge and you probably even have more. I remember when I was treating for uh, red bugs in my tank, uh, I got, I had to talk to my dog vet to uh, get prescribed, mm. you know, this uh, dog medication that killed the red bugs and she asked me, you know, how, how do you know all this? And I I said, well, here, I'll send you a bunch of articles. Here's, you know, the information that we have out there. She read them, and then she wrote me a prescription for this uh, medication for red bugs in reef tank. Oh, funny. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm lucky. But I knew more than her. My dog yeah. vet just happened to uh, have been a, a, a local reefer who has his own YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I know, it's so funny. Uh, so we get along really well. I'm sure you give me red bug uh, 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 treatment. Sentinel. No problem. Uh, all right, so uh, so now you, you've basically uh, just the end of that part of it is you are your tank's veterinarian. Yeah. Uh, you can't bring your fish to the vet, so you know the the fish are dependent on you for that knowledge, and you're going to have it to various degrees. Uh, I think one on us, it's our responsibility as uh, like the companies in, in the reefing industry to be able to condense that information and get it to you uh, in yeah. as many you know ways that whatever way you like to consume it it's it's not your responsibility per se man to like go search all that out i mean you'd like to think that you should but it's hard yeah so if you're going to like put it on somebody put it on me uh, I'm willing to take the, the heat like that make a uh, video. Like I could have been better along the way. I should have learned how to do this better years ago so I could share it with you. Mm. Uh, I would like to like share some of that with some of the other companies, especially the livestock guys. But, <laughs> uh, you know, all of us, man, we, we can, you know, uh, do better. So uh, one of the things that really changed for me, and I think it was last year, but like 2020, is owning the difference mm. between ick eradication and ick management in the tank. Yeah, this really one, owning the difference of what those two things are. This was a humble fish concept. That it's an article specifically yes, says this. It's, it, this is the title, ick eradication versus ick management. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to read this real quick for you uh, because they mean different things. Obviously, eradication means you've eliminated it from the tank. Management just kind of means you've accepted it's going to be in there. Uh, and knee jerk, you're going to say, well, of course I want to eradicate it. Sure. And you got a longer form vid full video on this. Yeah, one we actually too. have a whole video on this one if you want to go check it out. Uh, but actually, go check out, search Google ick management versus uh, ick eradication. You'll, You'll find, find this article. It. Read this. Uh, so, uh, simply put, er ick eradication means doing everything possible to keep ick out of the tank. That can be accomplished by establishing and maintaining a strict quarantine protocol outlined here. How to quarantine? Hyperlink. Uh, so find his article, I'll show you exactly how to do there it. There you go. No, thank you very much. It's important to quarantine each fish and every fish, including your very first one, if you want to avoid ick. So there's a, a thing here. A lot of people say you can't keep ick out of your tank. That is total, total crap. It's not can't. true. Stop saying that. <laughs> uh, it's hard. Let's acknowledge the level of difficulty, but also let's acknowledge that there is no magic ick fairy. 
that just uh, comes and sprinkles it in. Yeah, it has a life cycle. We understand it. We understand the things that uh, will end it. We know how to use medications. Uh, we know how to do tank transfer methods. We know how to do so many things. Uh, stop saying that it, it, it can't be eradicated because it's simply not true and it's wrong. Uh, Let's acknowledge in the same breath how ridiculously hard yes. it is. Yeah. Okay, Meticulous. there is a difference in between there uh, because it's important. Uh, and also, uh, well, I'll get to the next part. Okay, so that means that you have no ick in your tank if you've uh, quarantined or ick eradication. That means that you started with no fish in the tank at all, or if you had fish, you removed them, and you removed them for 76 days. Mm. That's the life cycle to make sure that you don't Not have 65. This. Yeah. Yeah, dude, if you did 74, you had to start again. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Uh, that sounds like one of my jokes, but it's yeah. not true. Uh, you had to go 76 days. It needs a medicated quarantine. So a quarantine that is actually going to kill the ick. Uh, you can also consider the tank transfer method. Which is um, one of the best ways to do it. Yeah, and uh, no tank near it within 10 feet uh, can be that has the ick or hasn't gone through this can be near it because it can aerosolize into the air, man, and make it over to the tank, believe it or not. Just took all your hard work out. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable. Corals, QT there, 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 here, there, here's, there, there. Here's the, here's the kicker, right? Corals, too. They can hold So on even to if it. you've done all of this with your fish, when you get a coral, you have to you assume that the that water and the coral and everything in there, and you can't rinse it off or anything yeah. that they're like immediately going to think yeah. of. Uh, right in the frag plugs. Yep. You got to go move your frag plugs to a new tank that's more than 10 feet away, doesn't share the air with it, and you need to put them in there for 76 days before you can put it in your tank. This ick eradication, zero ick, can happen. Raise your hand if you're willing to do that. Okay, and by the way, you can't put another coral in there for the next 76 days either. Otherwise, you have to restart the clock. No, I'm good. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like, I'm going to tell I you it's the right thing to do, but I, I'm also going to tell you... I know myself. Yeah. I, uh, okay. So, I, this is one of the things I'm going to say, man, is like, it's the right thing to do in the same way that I know I should work out for an hour in the morning. I should work out an hour mm, in the evening. Yeah, I should stop analogy. eating McDonald's for sure. Uh, and I should uh, really do like a lot of really healthy things. Uh, but you I know what know also... It. Like uh, I should, uh, you know, run your dog for an hour for mm -hmm. his health. You know, you should, you know, shoot your own squirrels for him. I don't know. Like a natural <laughs> diet. I have no idea. But like you, like I'm not, I'm not a perfect person. Yeah. Man. I have to live within a lifestyle like that is manageable, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's there's people out there that that do that though. Okay. There's people out there that take care of themselves and do the healthy thing or feed their animals that way. There's people out there dedicated to like doing this ick eradication. Okay, so here's the thing. The uh, Rick, ick eradicators of the world, there's two people in there. One that does it really well, has that level of dedication. Mm. They are the thought leaders, they're my hero, and I strive to be like you, I may never be you. <laughs> uh, uh, like, you are a level of reefer, man, we should all strive to obtain. The other half, say that, but they're not actually doing it right, uh, and so mm. which is even worse. Yeah, I'm yeah. QTing, but it's not working. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so then there's ick management. Most of us. Okay, this so I'm gonna read his little blurb here. Most of us fall. Well, actually, no. Or most of us fall in head in the sand. If you're gonna pick one of these two, there's a third one. It's head in the sand. I'm gonna throw a fish in there and pretend none of this happens. <laughs> uh, I, a I, lot of us are there. Okay, I, I, I was definitely that in the beginning. Yeah. I don't want to be that anymore, especially because yeah. it's so easy to not be. Yeah. All right. So, ick management. Uh, this method involves just managing the presence of the disease instead of eradicating it. You know you have ick in your tank and you're willing to risk it by foregoing QT. Despite how strongly I advocate ick eradication these days, I employed ick management for almost 30 years. Bravo, humble fish, for keeping it real, man. Yeah. Like, despite how much he's gonna tell you, he's gonna acknowledge for three decades he did it as well. Yeah. Okay. He found the key to uh, uh, success was keeping the overall number of parasites down while simultaneously boosting the few, uh, fish's immune system to deal with the parasites that survived. Some ways to accomplish this include, and I'll share with those in a second. So that is the most important part here, 
if you're going to practice ick management in the tank, which most of you are, mm -hmm. let's just be honest, uh, uh, and if you aren't, then go follow someone else. Close your ears, your muffs. Uh, <laughs> so uh, keeping Hulk and bears here. Yeah, uh, keeping the overall number of parasites down. So there's a bunch of ways to keep the parasites, number of parasites in there. So the amount of them that are attacking them. So management in the in one. I accept that they're in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to put my head in the sand. The the, the bugs are in there. The, the, the it's in there. Uh, two, I'm not willing to go down this whole eradication. So uh, now, if we if we're not playing head in the sand and we're not playing you know hero of the world to get rid of it, like you you do have to do uh, do do something about it. Yeah. And don't complain that it's happening in your tank if you're not willing to do anything about I'm it. I'm going to tell you why also, like you think you might not have a problem with this, and we've done, made that mistake in the past, and I'm going to tell you why it shows up in just a second mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so here's the deal. Keep the number of parasites down. This isn't like some uh, virus like the flu or something where you just get one and it repopulates in your lungs or wherever it does mm -hmm. and like, you can't do anything about it. This is a parasite that lives on the you know, like flesh of the fish. And it has like a cycle where it you know eats the fish and then you know falls off and repopulates in the sand. And then they you know hatch and they go back into the water. There are tons of ways to actually reduce the amount of parasites in the water. So they might always be a couple of them, and if you're really good them. eye, you'd yeah. be able to see them on the fish. Uh, yeah. if you knew what you were looking for, but not enough that would ever, in fact, mm. impact their health. Uh, which is different than the amount that like overwhelms them and you see them just totally covered in these parasites. Yeah, right? yeah. So keep the number of parasites down, simultaneously boosting the immune fish, uh, fish's immune system. So, you know, like things like the slime coat and, you know, the, it's just a healthy fish will make it difficult, more difficult for these uh, parasites to like uh, attack the fish. All right, so this is the things that he says uh, will be the most effective at ick management. One is the best UV sterilizer that you can afford. It's not going to solve it. He actually says the biggest. I, yeah. I changed it to best. But, uh, I, yeah, it won't solve it. It's not going to solve it. But when those guys fall off into the go into the sand uh, and then they hatch. That moment of time they're free-floating in the water column. Yep. Uh, I think they're called like torrents or something. Yeah. Uh, when they're in there, they're sterilized. They'll actually go eat the fish after that. But when they fall off, it's they're not done. able to re replicate Re themselves. Yeah. Right? Mm. Uh, and so they no longer reproduce, end of cycle. A couple of them Bring that didn't the make it through that thing uh, will go back and do the cycle. But it isn't like 10 makes 100, makes 1,000, makes 10,000, makes a million, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's 10 makes 2, makes, you know, like whatever. And, and like, it, you're keeping the population down so it doesn't overwhelm their immune system. So that's why the UV works in that case. Uh, nutrition. He's talking about foods, nori, vitamins, celcon, omegas. He, he talks about celcon and o omegas and uh, aminos and stuff like that and fatty acids mm. uh, as really inexpensive ways to add nutrition to the food. So especially pellets, they just like soak up that nutrition. So like Brightwell has a whole slew of these uh, vitamins. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, KZ has one specific for fish. Uh, Brightwell's got like one for angelfish that oh, eat yeah. sponges. Amino omega. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there's one just for sponges, but one. amino yeah. omega for fish too. So there's tons of them. They're not expensive. And they're just a couple of drops. So they'll last probably longer than your fish yeah, food does. But a fish already on the verge of uh, like not being very nutritionally healthy is more susceptible to you know even if you're managing it from some de some degree, mm -hmm. they, they're more susceptible to get something like this and yeah. then succumb to it. Yeah, so like, it's, it's not just like, let's make take them from A game, or like, you know, like these B plus health to A plus, let's make sure they're not D minus. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, hey, Feed them better. you may not know, and the only way you kind of know is making, put an effort into it. Mm. Uh, so also no ick magnets or ick factories. Some if you're going to do ick culprits. management, yeah. uh, skip Achilles, the Achilles tank. Powder brown, powder blue. powder blue, yeah. Don't add these things because they're just mm. time bombs waiting to go off. Even if they don't uh, have it right now, and then what happens is even if you have the uh, UV, they, like, uh, become this, uh, like, uh, I don't know, a, a parasite factory. Mm. They're, like their slime coat or, or something on them is really thin and it just makes it really easy for a, a t ick to attack these fish. So Those are all my favorite fish too, by the way. 
Yeah, well, so you know what? I then go it. to ick management. Then do ick management. Or I mean, want, do, uh, go well, ick eradication. Ah, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but you're, you know, I mean, you're going to hear some stuff from me and why I, I thought I was going to do that, and now I'm just dealing with reality. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. And then obviously, skip sick fish or fish that come from sick tanks. Yeah. So if you go to a fish store and you see every one of these tanks are all plumbed together and just three of them are sick in there, don't do fish that day. I don't know. Skip it, man. Yeah, I don't know. I like, it's sad to say, but it's just the way it is. Uh, garlic, he says, who knows? Uh, maybe it comes out their skin and yeah. makes it less palatable. Who knows? I don't know. It, somebody else can have the garlic debate, but uh, he didn't really get too excited about it. All right. So for me, I really wanted to do the QT uh, and medication series. Uh, you've been hearing me talk about doing a, a quarantine and medication series for a year plus, yes. probably. <laughs> so what's holding me back? Mm. Well, I just want more experience applying knowledge before I share it with others. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, I got, you know, uh, I got Elliot on tap, actually a, a local fish store owner uh, at New Wave, Jen, has uh, talked to me about her willingness maybe to come in and share some knowledge uh, oh, yeah. and quarantine some fish. One of the things I really want to do is actually I got a gem tang and I got a purple tang and some tanks that they've outgrown now. And I actually want to quarantine them and bring them home. Mm. So that's probably what you'll see and hopefully we'll do it in the very near future yeah. here. Uh, but the reason you haven't seen me do it is because I don't want to share information that sucks. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just like I really want it to be accurate and good, and this is not one of the areas where I would say that I am, you know, an expert. If I'd worked at a fish store, a fish wholesaler, I'd probably be a plethora. I'd be able to talk about this for hours. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and share all kinds of information on how to do it properly. But I don't know. I, I, I'm just gonna say I'm probably not your best resource, but I'm gonna try my best. Yeah. Right. You've been uh, been focused on gear and other parts of the hobby more so than fish ick and eradication and parasites mm -hmm. and things. So I have some of the best resources available to me and they're going to help me shape the best information we can possibly do to put together for you. Actually, before this whole COVID crap, uh, Elliot was going to actually come out here and do this video with set it set it up yeah. with you, talk yeah. about it, walk through you know, it, yeah. kind of do the marine collector protocol, and then like you know the sky fell out and we're all going to die. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully that will happen as well. Uh, not that we're all going to die. Then yep. he'll come here and do the marine collector <laughs> protocol. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, and uh, uh, end of the story, man. I bet you. If you had to guess what percentage, what percent of people are doing the ick eradication or doing proper quarantine up mm. front? Oh, ick eradication? Yeah, well, like in just in medicated quarantine. Let's just say that. Uh, mm. You know, how many people? Hardly. Like, very low percentage. Maybe like seven, ten, seven to ten percent. Of you think one in ten? It has a hospital tank ah, set up at home maybe one, and is doing it. One in, no, maybe one in a hundred. Uh, okay, of the one in a hundred, how many are doing it correctly? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We don't have to answer that question. Yeah, Ten percent uh, of that. Yeah, it's pretty rare, man. All right, so let's make it easy. Let's make it. Uh, mm. You get very distinct information. Again, the application of the knowledge isn't that hard. It's the acquisition of the knowledge. Let's make that part at least easy. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, uh, I also, uh, you know what I learned the other day, too? This is where we sit in 2020. Yeah, in 2020. Why do $5,000 fish, $5 fish cost 5000 bucks? Scarcity? Nope. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, because somebody did all that work for me? Kind of. Yeah. You know what? I, I asked Elliot, like, he's like, oh, yeah, dude, this fish came in, you know, and he's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's 5,000 bucks. You know I mean? Yeah. Like, How's it why? get to that cost? I, well, why? And he's like, yeah, it's not even rare. I'm like, wait. It's, it's like a used car, man. Yeah. You know, like, okay, so here's the thing. He's like, dude, this fish lives at, you know, like 1,500 feet underwater. Mm. Difficult, right? very difficult. Okay, so this is beyond like uh, what uh, 
a normal uh, oxygen tank will will take you. Mm. Uh, you now have to breathe like a, I'm, I'm going to butcher this by the way because this isn't my field, but like a mix of nitrogen and something, and some kind of weird rebreather. Oh yeah, right. Uh, and you have because these things are super complex and they break all the time. You actually have to bring redundant ones and then be able to fix it in real time, right? And so you got to dive all the way down there. And then you have to get the fish, and mm -hmm. if you do this right, and you don't like pierce its bladder and like do all this awful stuff to it to bring it up. Yeah. If you do it right, you're gonna bring it up, like a couple hundred feet, and then you're gonna go back there tomorrow and do it again, and bring it up a couple <laughs> hundred feet, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Okay, dude. Uh, I don't know what he makes on that fish, but if it sold for five thousand dollars here in the United States, the guy probably made two thousand. People risking that their lives. That dude earned his money, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know what? I, I, I understand now. I don't understand, you know, necessarily what if you need the five thousand dollar fish, but like the scarcity or the rare, the the reason it's rare isn't because it's rare down there. No, it's rare up here. Yep. Right. Yep. Now yep. the cool part is actually people are breeding them up here. Yeah. Uh, so they spent all the time, many years, got the right specimens, and now breeding mm -hmm. them. And they're still rare because of that. Uh, but the nature of it is, is people like rare stuff. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. At this point it's in time, there. 16 years now, yeah. you're gonna see me collect some pretty rare fish. Doctor Soup soap. With, or Doctor <laughs> Doctor Seuss soap fish. That was actually a good example of. Yeah. Uh, like I told, uh, I told him, and I really wanted a couple of Doctor Seuss fish, and he's like, "Price has gone down." We said no. They said those are soap fish, so you know, just you know, man, if they die, they can pollute the hell out of your tank. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh. I don't want that. No. The pepper mini, the peppermint <laughs> angels. I don't want it. That yeah, so I don't know. We'll find out what uh, actually ends up in my tank. But like, you know, part of it's for you guys. I want to like expose everybody to new fun stuff. I don't want to show you the same flame angel that we've seen for the last sixteen years. Yeah, true. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I want to do something new. Yeah. Uh, I want to show you the Anthony's that are the Anthony Anthias yeah. that blew my mind that eat krill. Uh, instead of uh, <laughs> like, like now learn why it's you know they hang on little ledges 500 feet deep uh, yeah. in Japan yeah, I don't know you get to tell the story it's fun uh, all right so all right now we come to the two fish that uh, I just killed the other day there you go all right and when I say I killed I'm trying to be mean to myself this is where we are uh, today. I don't know so what happened is I got a Labutii and a Lineatus ras. Mm -hmm. And they were both really cool specimens. Yeah. Like, I mean, if both I've had these fish before. These two were really good. Yeah. Right? Uh, and uh, he said it perfect, actually. It was cool. Because I had uh, had the, the screen at top on the tank. And then, or no, I didn't have it yet. I can't remember exactly. Oh, I took the screen at top off because I didn't have the little portal in there. And after I put the hood on, I couldn't get the things out. And it was a big pain in the butt. Oh, okay. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to send you two new fish, man. But you need to have uh, uh, the screen at top back on. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll probably get it back on soon. I got to put the portal. He's like, dude, I will not send you these fish and tell <laughs> you for the thing. Like, Good for him. Yeah, I know. I, I like, like, all right, yeah, you're not getting your right, fish, like, so tell me when it's on. And so if you saw a video the next day of me setting up uh, the screen at top of my tank on that, Facebook, that was, that was the reason why. That was Elliot kicking you. <laughs> okay, he's like, dude, these fish can jump multiple times a day. You know? <laughs> and so anyway, so I put them in an acclimation box, you know, because when I added the uh, white-tailed tang, the Anthias chewed him up. And you probably saw that on Facebook yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like happened. shredded fins. And I'll tell you, uh, by morning, he was the boss. Things had tied, tides had turned. Uh, <laughs> and so all of a sudden, the Anthias were chumps. Uh, I don't know. And so. Initiation. Yeah, things had changed uh, very, very rapidly. Uh, but uh, after I saw that, you know, go down. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start using this acclimation box. Mm -hmm. I just didn't really think it was going to be a big deal with, what, two, the three fish or whatever yeah. in, in a 360-gallon yeah, tank. tank. It's like huge. I just I didn't think it was going to be a yeah. thing. It was. So I got an acclimation box. And I put them both in there. Mm -hmm. And that lasted about 20 minutes. <laughs> and I turned around, and it was, uh, I looked over, and my son saw a magnet on the outside of the glass and said, let's pull it. <laughs> and so he pulled down the mag that was free. holding on the, the thing, and the fish were free. I'm like, well, I don't know. I guess uh, we'll see what happens. And you know what? Well. No, it actually was going just fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm like, well, I don't know. And I was watching him for probably an hour and a half, and there's a little squabbles going on and whatever. 
and then I decided to go upstairs. And so I went upstairs for a couple of hours. I came back down, and the lineatus was stuck to the vortex. Oh. Right, and I like, oh, I thought for sure he was dead. You know, yeah. I turned off all the vortex immediately. He fell off, and it was all like curved up. But I went to grab him, <laughs> and he faint, shot off. Pulled a fainting goat on you. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I, I, I went off. But as soon as he shot off, saw shot off, the white-tailed tang was just eating him, you know. And then he would like kind of do this thing, and he would shoot off, and he would have the white tails all over him. Like, all right, well, I know what happened. Mm. You know, he stressed him to the point that he got near the the vortex, and yeah. you know, he just probably was just did his little arch thing and went into it. You know? <laughs> uh, and so uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, it was sad. I, and he said 50-50 whether or not he makes it. I, I was able to put him in the acclimation box, and he was breathing. But I euthanized too, him a, a day later because he wasn't going to make yeah. it. He's still Gosh. breathing, but it was ugly. All right, but like now I'm watching these stupid little Johnson wrasses that are this big. They're a third the size of the Lubudii, mm. and they just won't stop pestering them. They're not biting them or anything. S stress, you know? stress, They're stress. They're just like, stress. yeah, you go over there. You poke, go over there. Poke, oh, you only go over poke, there? We'll poke, go over here. Poke, yeah. poke. Just yeah. exactly poke, poke, yeah. poke, poke, poke. And so what I did is I brought the acclimation box down and I put it in there so he could kind of like hide from him. But he was still like stressed inside that box. And he was eating, so I put food in and he would mm. actively go after it every time. Clear. But there's no protection. I don't know, man. Like he died like no, uh, about a week later. No cover, no yeah, place to hide. Not a week, I don't know. But five days yeah. later he died. And so it was just that constant, constant. And those little guys were jerks, man. You know, and they're tiny. I, you know, I thought for sure like they'll go on for like a day or two, and then you're just like, I wasn't that concerned because they weren't biting him. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just kind of pushing him around. You know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so when I talked to him about it, he's like, "Well, yeah. So, you know, what are we gonna do? Because it looks like you got jerks. You know, and now that's one of the number one lessons is uh, in this whole thing is uh, there's personality." Fish aren't cookie cutters, and like what works for Joe doesn't work for Jill, doesn't work for Jerry. Uh, yeah, I've got I, I, I see that conversation all the time. Well, I've got one and it doesn't do this. Well, I've got one and it does this. Well, I've got one and it doesn't do this. Mm -hmm. And it, it's uh, it's spread to be like their behavior is supposed to be cut and dry. Like they all act this way or they don't all act this way. Okay, and so why would a, a white tailed tang go after a lineatus wrasse? They don't share the same food source, they don't look alike. Mm. It's just not a very common thing, mm. you know? Uh, and like, why would the Antheas go after the white tailed tang? Why would these tiny little, like, I understand why the Johnson wrasses actually go after the Labudii because they look kind of similar, but mm -hmm. why would they just like pasture them to death that way, you know? And, and why wouldn't he figure out to go to the other side of the tank and right. stay away from him? Yeah. You know, like, I'm trying to like kind of shoo him over to a tank that's, you know, six feet Massive. wide, four feet. They like, all hang I mean, in there's the gotta be quarter. a way. No, man, he just goes right back to him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, I don't know, this is the end of what he talked to me about. Some of it's really cool. Hey, Dave, would you mind go grabbing that rock thing we built earlier? All right, so here's a couple of things, man. First, uh, Elliot told me it's time to up my game. Yeah, like, <laughs> be a you. better fish keeper. <laughs> I'm sending you all these nice fish and be better. Well, he's like, dude, you're, you're gravitating to a, a new arena, man. Like, uh, some of these things are expensive and, uh, like, the... Bad luck just can't be an option anymore, <laughs> right? And you know now you have some aggressive, mean fish, yeah. too, and that may or may not change over time. Uh. So we need to uh, uh, account for it. And so one of the things, uh, I don't think that we have this in here in terms of, well, one of the things is I, I told him, I was like, hey, dude, let's, because it's video, you know, like I, I'm always balancing this thing with it's my own tank. It's also you guys are interested, so yeah. let's like make it fun. Yeah. Like, yeah, send me something new every week. You know, yeah, ish. Yeah. You know, we'll throw it in there and we'll talk about it. And I kind of like the idea because it allows me to like really pay attention to that specific fish. I can learn its habits, like I did with the antheas, and learn more about mm -hmm. it. I can absorb it, and it just gives me a, a more unique experience. You know, meeting my pets for the first right. time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, in that spirit, 
it's just not going to work that way. They like adding two fish at a time is clearly causing a lot of stress. I'm probably going to do it to some degree, but we're going to have to change some things up. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of them we're going to add it all at once. Oh, as many as you can. All right. So uh, he thought it was actually funny, all the questions I asked. And he's like, dude, you shoot videos all the time. I'm like, uh, it's so funny that uh, I'm answering these questions for you. I'm like, dude, this is your arena. This is yeah. where you're at. Right. Like, I probably held, uh, I probably in my own tanks had, you could call it in dozens of fish. Species. You have cared for maybe thousands, thousands if not tens of, tens of thousands of, thousands of thousands. fish, yeah. man. So like, whereas I have troubleshooted 8 million auto top offs, calcium <laughs> reactors, <laughs> uh, RDI units. perfected lighting, yeah. stopped leaks, uh, all the system design <laughs> things, man, you could know to man, that's my arena. Yeah. You have touched and cared for 10,000 fish. You are my mentor. <laughs> and he just thought it was super funny. Oh, so I, I think it's funny too. Uh, so, uh, and this is the, the thing. So I passed up in my game. Uh, yeah. The first thing we're going to do is acclimate them. Uh, and so there's a couple of different ways that we could acclimate them. I got this giant sump. So the first thing I could do is acclimate them in the sump just so like you, they're not in shipping anymore. Right. I can let them live in the sump. Put them in it off, boxes. use some of that, like, uh, what do they call that? That mesh. Oh, that mesh, uh, that mesh stuff. Aqua mesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can cordon it off uh, and, you know, feed them in there and have zero stress for them. Throw, like, some rock structure, or, like, maybe uh, throw this guy in there. I'll tell more about this in a second. But throw uh, some uh, rock structure or something down in there and just let them live in there for a while. Maybe let them get bigger, you know, whatever but mainly that they're strong and they're healthy and they're not stressed out from the whole shipping experience, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're not um, dumping them in a tank right off the bat where fish want to just yep. attack them. Okay. So he's like, well, you know, sometimes that, but sometimes in a lot of people's sumps, they just get lost. And my sump is very different. It's so big. It could be a tank of its own. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, easy, to easy, easy to section off. Yeah, for this easy purpose. to section off too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but that's an option. Uh, also, uh, you know, he actually told me, so I got these three antheas. I'm not telling you what they are yet because it's a surprise. Yeah. But uh, he's like, yeah, they're going to be uh, like an inch and a half. And uh, I would keep them in there for two months. Hmm. I'm like, wow. He's like, yeah, you know, they're about an inch and a half. I, I think he says that these things grow really fast and they'll probably be, you know, two plus inches mm. inside of uh, a couple of months. Leave them in there. They also, like in a big tank, you want to make sure you can feed them really easy. Yeah. Uh, and they're, you know, uh, these ones are captive bred, so you're not going to really have a heart. Like, they're used to they're hardy, living around yeah. each other and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, instead of using that stupid magnetic thing, which somebody's going to pull that magnetic coupler back down again next side two months, let's build a, an acrylic box that will go in the corner of the tank. You know, I can put some rock structure or something in it, you know, obviously vent it for flow yeah. and stuff and keep water flow going through it. But, like, I don't have any problem then. Just like, let's drop them in there. And he's like, yeah, a lot of these fish don't actually need to interact with each other to figure out who's dominant. They can just see each other. And especially if it's going to happen over the course of a couple of months. Mm. So whether you use a big acclimation box or, or not, you know, we actually have had a you know, pretty big fish in acclimation box for weeks up yeah. here when they were trying to fight, and eventually you can get them to like each other. Uh, yeah. But it's not or the kind tolerate. of thing you're going to do overnight in no. many cases. No, 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 no. Especially if it really matters. Because if I let these fish go uh, and it doesn't go well, it's probably not going to go well. I may not capture them in time right. to, to save them. So everything that I can do to care for them uh, and make sure it's successful, I should do. So we're going to do that. Uh, I don't know if Randy's going to help me or not. He helped me build the last <laughs> acrylic stuff. So maybe come over to my garage and uh, we'll build some some. We've been talking about building acrylic boxes. stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't have to hold water. So uh, yeah. So what if it leaks a little bit? Yeah. Uh, acrylic is uh, one thing is if, if you need to make it be watertight, that's one thing. If it just needs to be a box. We can do it. Anybody can do that. <laughs> uh, all right. So that, was, that answers those three questions of uh, where, how long, does it go in the sump, how big is it? Uh, I'll show you that. You know, I'll probably see it on YouTube, but also Facebook probably in real time. Mm -hmm. Also, this one was super interesting, and I, want, I wanted to show this video. I'll show this video on Facebook. Uh, he shared it with me, and you guys will be able to see it later. Uh, but it was about habitat. This one really hit home for me. So 
Hey, I got this. Hey, Dave, do you happen to have a, a, a shot of uh, the Aquascape? Uh, in my house? Yeah. Well, let's see if you can find it. I don't know. But, like, uh, it's this really cool, like what we'd call probably a negative scape, aquascape, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, if you look at it, it's really open and it's got a lot of nooks and crannies, but. If it's you pay smooth attention, it's smooth. Yeah. There isn't like a lot of places See, for the fish to hide. Not reef saver. They can hide. Go. Oh, that well, one. they're there like, go. yeah, there, there's That's a picture a of one. it. This is a good picture. You know, yeah. Or is that a video? No, no, whatever. Just a picture. Yeah. All right, so you can, sh you can see it here. I don't know, uh, eventually here. Dave's got it. There we go. So you can see there's a lot Dave, of everybody. smooth areas in this rock. It looks really cool. Yeah. But there isn't actually that many places for fish to hide. No, and even the like even the bottom, the foundation you can see in the, ooh, that was a good one. Oh. Even the base of these things are intended to be up off of the the yeah, ground. Any, anyone so, else, that first one you had there, that video. Yeah, right here. That's great. That's great. Okay. So Yeah, so like there's no habitat. they can't go under rock, in rock, around there's like nowhere to, this is a good one because it shows the close up yeah. of like how smooth some of those areas are. It's not jagged, it's not ridgy. Yeah, it's Limited just not like space. a pile of rocks where there's just tons of areas to yeah. uh, go. And so this is the thing. If you can come back to me now. Uh, so here's the thing is, it, like he said, basically they want tight little spots that they can wedge themselves in. Yeah. They want to feel secure. And he's like, you should go get uh, some plumbing fittings, like one inch plumbing fittings, and then you just kind of glue them together in a together. trio. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, well, I don't want that. It's ugly. <laughs> we can do better uh, than that. But like that, that doesn't, there, there are places like that in the tank, but they're harder to find and there's not that many of them. Mm -hmm. And so immediately like, like, oh man, what am I gonna like re-aquascape this tank? You know, I'm gonna build a bunch of other structures for it. What am I gonna do? And those are all like knee jerk reactions. And I thought about it for a minute and I'm like, you know what? Once this tank is full of coral, those are the not real issues. Yeah, you can take those things out and now you have coral and spaces yeah. to hide. So like once there's coral in here like that, they create all those nooks and crannies yep. in an aquascape yep. like yep. that. Yep. Yep. So it's actually about today's problem, not about tomorrow's, you know? And so I can make temporary solutions rather than like try to rework the whole aquascape to fit that uh, specific need. And right? here comes the ISA. Okay, the ISA. <laughs> All right, and so what he said to me is the way that those Johnson wrasses and some of like the Lubudia and the other fairy wrasses, what they do is they live over like sheets of rubble, essentially, oh, like yeah. coral rubble. And I mean, this is there's a video he sent me, and I'm gonna share it on Facebook, and I'll share the story there because mm -hmm. it's the really cool. Should, the when one you, see you showed, it. Me, showed me. Yeah, but I should have gave it to Dave. Looks earlier. like a bunch of those. Yeah. Littered across the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's just tons, and then there's you can just see like there's just areas they're diving in yep. and diving out yep. of. And he's like, yeah, so the natural habitat for these fairy wrasses is tons and tons of networks of little caves and stuff on the ground, mm. and they hover over the top of it and so shoot they can up and down. Dart in when it's time to. And they're like, all right, well, yeah. so that's cool. I mean, uh, you know, you don't really see reef tanks that are covered in rubble on the bottom with holes and stuff like that. Yeah. So rather than do your your plumbing fitting thing that I can't possibly look at for the next two years. <laughs> you know, so Some let's build PVC. something else. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my uh, second try or third try at this. Uh, you saw it maybe the other day, you saw my first try. Yep. So what I did is just broke up the reef saver rock into a bunch of little pieces and you know from one angle it Reassemble. might actually just like, whoop, I broke it. Uh, and we just glued this together a second ago. It might look like actually like a, a, a rock. rock, you know, but it's actually a network of rocks and open holes and it's just like there's tons of different ways to shoot in there. And so what we did is created you know, areas that they can swim in and swim in any of these holes, any of them. And there's areas for them to nestle in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a few of these and I might put one in the sump, I might put them, you know, around the tank in, in different areas. And now there's habitat, natural yeah. types of habitat that these fish would naturally live in. He said, not only that, but your, your Johnson wrasses are probably going to leave the aquascape you're at and go live in these things right away. <laughs> uh, but uh, the new fish, you know, they're hoarding them into the corners. I'll go put up a couple of these in the corner. They'll put them in different places. So I'm going to build a few of these so that there's some more habitat in there temporarily. Yeah. Uh, Coral grows and, then, and you, you can know, pull them out. 
And, and by temporary, it might be in there for two years, mm -hmm. you know, until yeah. I get the corals to grow out like yeah. this, and then yeah. maybe I take them out. Uh, you know, I don't know. It depends on how, how good I get at making the, these things look and match <laughs> the, the, the aquascape that's in there. Uh, but I like sweet, man. Habitat, that's information, man, that I didn't have before and I wasn't thinking about. Uh, and so then he says uh, to me, diet. What are you feeding them and how frequently? Yeah. And I explained it to him and most of his, he was really, he thought it was really interesting that the, the uh, antheas are now eating mice and rods food and stuff. I am like, yeah, they eat whatever the other ones are eating. It's like a competitive thing. They just like, they, they're going after it. <laughs> and he thought it was really interesting. But he's like, how frequently are you feeding it? Yeah. Uh, and what I said was, uh, you know, I don't know, what's the, once a day, you know, yeah. like at a different times. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes the evening, or whatever. And, uh, you know, because they're eating big food and a lot of it. Yeah. And he's like, aggression is so much about food. And I immediately went to the clowns in my head. I'm like, of course. Uh, right? You already learned that lesson. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, you know, one of the things that we found uh, about the aggression with the clowns, too, is if anything changed, the, the feeding cycle changed, the like lighting cycle change, it created a aggression. aggression event, yeah. right? Mm. And if we kept everything the same and reliable and predictable, nothing ever uh, would go wrong. Yeah. So he's like, dude, get an auto feeder. So I went and got, I haven't put it on yet, the but Neptune AFS. the, the yeah. AFS feeder, mm -hmm. and of course, they'll hook it up to the apex that's there. But uh, now you can set it to go off, you know, three times a day, you know, put a feeder ring underneath it or whatever you need to and it will become predictable. And I, again, like just immediately went to the aggression with the clowns is as long as that feeder was, the auto feeder there was full and it was doing it predictably, there you remove the food aggression. As long as food isn't predictable, then in like, uh, I'm Neither is my, my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not predictable. Yeah, so I don't know. So that was really interesting. Uh, and then he also kind of said that you consider the Hikari mysis, even though the Hikari mysis uh, tends to have uh, less uh, like fat and protein in it, mm -hmm. they're smaller. Yeah. So uh, for like these new antheas I'm getting, and maybe even the Johnson rasses, consider feeding those uh, up front just because uh, like when your fish are really small, they might prefer smaller mm. uh, mysis shrimp. That makes sense. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess I'd never heard anybody recommend those specifically yeah. uh, for anything. So, uh, so again, the refuge areas create areas in the tank where there's refuge, whether it be a, a, a you know a, an acclimation box uh, of, of type, uh, and you know another one is a plan versus what you want. And that was one of the things I mentioned earlier. Yeah. What I want is to put new tank a fish in there every week and share them with you guys and really absorb it. But we're going to slow things down, and we're going to do them in different orders. <laughs> uh, so the anthony is already here, so we're just going to solve that problem with the big old acclimation box. Right. Uh, but some of the other stuff, I might slow down and bring them in batches. The next one I really want to get in there is a tang gang so I can turn on the lights. Mm -hmm. Also, he asked me temperature. A lot of these fish actually come from colder water. Oh, interesting. A am yeah. I willing to run the temperature? And I haven't answered that question yet because I'm... I've never run a reef tank like at 70, 75 degrees. 75, 76, yeah. Yeah, 75, 76. I've never run in like, I don't really know how that affects the corals mm. on a personal level. So I'm gonna start asking some other people that I trust and you know maybe the community as well. Mm. Uh, but you know, I don't know, maybe I'll try it here. But he said that a lot of times when you get fish that are used to colder water and you put them in hot water, uh, they get aggressive with each other. Yeah, boiling like, their blood. And like, so hey man, it doesn't <laughs> hurt to try, I guess. Uh, and then he's also going to teach me uh, a little bit more about aggression versus hierarchical uh, behavior. Mm. So what to watch for, uh, and I'll share this with you guys too. Yeah. Uh, what does aggression look like and what does hierarchical behavior look like? And mm -hmm. some of it's obvious, uh, like aggression means chewing off your fins. Yeah, if I've got uh, missing chunks of fin, somebody's being aggressive. Some of it is less obvious yeah. than that. All yeah, right. Just a little right. flash at each other. <sighs> 2025. Here's what we want to see in the future. Times are changing. We're going to see some changes for uh, the, the future of uh, reef tanks and saltwater aquariums. Keeping our fish. We don't have to keep doing the same mistakes of the past. We can change the way that we do things for the better. I think onus on reefers, onus on uh, the leaders in the industry, onus on the thought leaders. Let's all do better together uh, and change the way 
that we treat and think about the fish in our tank. All right, and it's not hard and it can be so much better. It can be so much better and, and uh, like everyone involved can benefit. There's nobody along the way that will say, that, oh man, that sucks. That was terrible. Yeah, no, everyone benefits from this. <laughs> so think about this a little bit as you go through it and we're, we're going through it, but this is what, like I, I'm, I'm somewhere in between uh, like a, uh, I wish this for 25, 2025. Yeah. And I think it will actually happen in 2025. This is five years from yeah. now. Uh, okay. Uh, ick eradication. The in, one that we in, said. In 2025. Really this is a dedicated mission. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. I don't think the ick eradication will be a primary thing in 2025 still. Still. Oh, I did, yeah. Eradication, all tanks have gone through all the steps of medicated uh, quarantine. Uh, they, every coral uh, that has ever seen a fish tank isn't added to the other fish mm. tank for 76 days. Like, uh, and they're I'm, never cross-contaminated. The tanks aren't more than 10 feet close to each other. I am not willing to stay on a regimen for the rest of my life of running and always eating healthy and never eating anything crappy and like not drinking not doing all this other stuff i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not going to take care of myself personally with that much dedication i i highly doubt i could do this my the ick eradication too uh so i yep. can see why it's not going to be a thing probably not going to be i just uh open on us I, I i i would love to be wrong on this one there will be more people doing it because mm -hmm. uh hopefully down the road that we mm. they there's teachable information but okay people who want to keep uh, uh, Achilles tangs and powder blues and stuff mm. like that and especially if they're a fish only tank mm. ah this is actually uh, one if it's a fish only tank I think this will pra be practiced widely yeah so I am almost certain uh, in the next few years you're gonna see me start a fish only tank mm. uh, just because uh, I've never really had a big one and I just want to do it yeah uh, I, and it allows me to have fish that I've never had before and I just want to get excited about it yeah. uh, in that tank I want to have Achilles tanks I want to have powder blues and I won't have corals near it it won't be within 10 feet I think that I'm gonna change this one I think ick eradication will be very popular on fish only tanks. On specific tanks. Yep. On reef tanks, I think it still won't be. Yeah. More people will do it, I think. Mm -hmm. I think, like, if I'm considering a multi thousand dollar fish or a very expensive fish, this will become okay. I, part of what I want to do. This is actually where some of my opinion changed the other day. Mm -hmm. Like, he's at, Elliot's asking me what are like some of my fish that I just want more than anything else. And I'm like, Achilles is on my list. Mm -hmm. He's like, dude, you shouldn't have an Achilles. And I'm like, well, why, man? Because I got you. Your you know, quarantining thing is all perfect. That's your whole thing. Yeah. Like, yep. But if you are going to, uh, are you going to uh, quarantine your, your corals for 76 days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. He's like, dude, <laughs> you're gonna have all these expensive, really cool fish, and then you're gonna have this ick magnet, an ick, you know, factory in there. If anything comes in there, that fish could be the rest, of the de uh, all the, the death of all the rest. Mm. Like, never mind. <laughs> so that's the difference, though. It's like most people would just sell you that fish because you want to give money for it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, dude, I don't, I don't think you should do that. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm like, well, fuck. thank you. Oh, there it is. There's the F-bomb for today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I didn't even catch it until you caught yourself. Yeah, all right. There all it right. is. Uh, well, ick management is uh, just some wise moves. Yeah. Everyone should, 2025, ick should management is like a no-brainer, yeah. right? Especially from new system design and uh, like uh, the UV thing is uh, like a, that ship sailed, man. We can stop debating it and know mm. for sure it's going to reduce the amount of parasites in the water. It will not eradicate them. So that ship sailed too. Mm. But the goal isn't eradication. It's just to reduce the amount of like parasites attacking our fish. Do that. But if you can't do that, you can certainly feed your fish better. You can feed fish better. You can make better, uh, make more informed decisions about what fish you're going to put in there. Like there's yeah. a variety. All of, of these things, things are doable. Do. Make, make stress. 
Yeah, make your own fish food. Yeah. You know, if you don't got time for that, buy Rod's food. Yeah. If you don't got time for that, use some pellets and then drop the uh, amino acids or the uh, like uh, the the KZ uh, fish amino in there yeah. or the Celcon. Uh, like, make sure that you're feeding the nori because that's that Tang's actual diet. Or at least uh, if you can't do that, then you can do the seaweed extreme. You know, so I'm getting algae into the fish's diet. There's always something that you can do. Like yeah. even if the laziest reefer out there can do some Ick of this management. stuff for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and so, uh, also that don't buy the powder blue. Don't buy the Achilles tang. I know you want it. I don't want it. Just don't do it. Like find something else to want. It's part of ick, manage or ick management. It's ick management. Don't get the fish that you know for sure is eventually going to kill the tank. And this is actually the piece that I was going to share. We didn't share earlier, which is what's happening with the ick and uh, like uh, an Achilles and stuff in there is even though you have successfully got these in there and there's ick in the tank, but the thing isn't uh, dead yet or wiping out the rest of it, it's waiting for a stress event. Mm -hmm. And so we had a bunch of Achilles and some other things in a big tank here. And what happened is uh, the tank temperature dropped to uh, like eight degrees because the heaters went out over the weekend. And that was <sighs> enough to cause all of them to wipe out an ick. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so what's happening is they're fighting off successfully every day but all it takes is one bad event, and we're Which all is easy gonna have to do. bad events. It's gonna happen. All of it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You will have it, I will have it, we'll have a half a dozen of them, it's just when, right? And so we don't wanna have fish that the, the moment that our heater breaks, uh, all of a sudden everybody dies of, of <laughs> ick, like that's just silly. So just don't put those fish in there, and don't buy fish that are uh, from places that clearly don't care about their fish, uh, they're sick, uh, I can, Name a few, but I don't need to roll over anybody. Right, 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 right. Like, uh, uh, where you constantly see, it's not worth the gamble. It might be worth the gamble in your first rodeo, but we're beyond that now. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, if you're asking what's better, uh, uh, oh, this is that part about eating uh, oh. two hours of exercise a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, man. I know which one of those is better: the ick eradication or management. Management's real. Anybody could do it. Yeah. Super pro, do super rich. dedicated eradication is possible. I just don't think that's going to be real in 2025 unless you have a fish only tank, which you should do for sure uh, in that case because it's actually really easy then. Uh, all right. So we just do what we can. We share what we can. Hopefully, dump and pray approach of related advice becomes a distant memory, kind of like buying a puppy from a puppy mill in the mall. Mm. Yeah, so buying your puppy from the pet store in the mall for on sale for 250 bucks with a free bag of food, nobody does that anymore. Yeah, it's uh, pretty far and few between. That's pretty rare. Yeah, so it's not that like, I guess what I'm asking and I'm hoping for is that we stop sharing that information and we do what we can. And like the advice of, I don't know, I dumped my stuff in the tank and it was just fine. Just Try not, not to share that, actually, like, it's not because it's true, advice. and I believe you, but you haven't run into that stress event either, uh, and you may not have anyway. And so like, what it does is actually stagnates and prevents progress. Mm. It prevents people learning the right way to do it. And so like, I'd like to see, like, even, even the, the advice really should be like, yeah, I did that, and I was lucky, I throw the dice. Better yet is go follow this thing, and you will don't you won't have to rely on luck anymore. Yeah, say some people text and drive and get away with it all the time. And some people <laughs> die. I, I, some people die. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, and like I, I like to see this too inside of our hobby. The goal isn't to sell more animals as mm -hmm. a business. The goal is to get healthy pets to people capable of caring for them. Yeah. Right? So let's get past whether or not I can make a fish sale today uh, that I know that giving accurate information of reef uh, uh, safe yeah. with caution is actually a deterrent to buy these things. Looking at you, LFSs. Uh, well, also the online places, nope. you know, like, uh, like what will happen is you won't sell that fish today, but the person's going to buy a fish and they're going to be so much happier Guide with that right. interaction. So, you know, Let's get past the, the whole thing of selling more animals. Let's get to the goal of healthy pets to people capable of caring for them, right? So like, uh, hey, are you really, really willing to do all these steps? Yeah. You are? All right, go ahead. But at least you know about it ahead of time. All right, okay. <laughs> and I, I said this earlier, but 
Uh, I've never seen the largest or the cheapest supplier of pets able to be the same thing, you know, to be the, the healthiest, the one, the largest and cheapest supplier. It's not just the largest. So the largest is one thing. It, it makes it more difficult to maintain standards. Right. The cheapest mm. is really, really hard to be the best, especially if something carrying for an animal. Yeah. Uh, so to be able to make sure, I mean, in the end, they're kind of looking at margins and stuff more often than anything, yeah. you know. Uh, but I'm a big, huge caveat here. If there's one industry that could do it, this is it, it is definitely reefing. Where you could be so, the cheapest and the best. Well, I don't know about the cheapest. Uh, the but, cheapest is still going to be a weird uh, yeah. combination. But I think the best, uh, the biggest, could also be the best if mm. they want it to be. Uh, and so, and then the best, or the biggest could, and when I say biggest, not just the biggest that's here today, but yeah. the biggest could be somebody else down the road that, you know, decides I want to do it differently. I want to add a different value matrix uh, out, out there that says, you know, these are our pets, we're going to care for them. It's not a commodity impulse buy like a candy bar or a, a goldfish, you know. Yeah. Or, I don't know, my, my daughter thought that hamster was cute, so we bought a new rodent for the house, you know. <laughs> it's not the same thing, you know. Uh, and so I don't know. Uh, so uh, beyond that, uh, like, I think healthy pets could be the number one opportunity for fish stores as well. You said that earlier, I'm going to say it again. You know, uh, like you don't buy puppies from the mall anymore. Mm. But I think actually this is another area where the fish store, you know, in, in, could be in the mall, strip mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be the inverse of that. Could be the exception like to the whole industry. You go to fish stores to buy, uh, buy pets because online is a gamble more than just somebody who's doing it properly. I'm buying them from the wholesalers. Yeah. We're bringing them in. Even if you only did it in half the store. And half the store was, hey, I train you how to quarantine these on your own, get rid of the diseases. And the other half of the store, we already did it, and these things cost three times as yeah. much because you see that of that. yellow tang over here yeah. versus that yellow tang over there. But let me tell you the value. Here's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. go watch here's this video. Uh, this is the value mm. of this thing. Uh, and you know what? Sometimes, though, I'm going to actually say that trying to be everything to everyone actually ends up being yeah, no, but nothing point, to nobody. Point to something. So it might be better off to, uh, there's five stores in your area that all sell uh, the cheapest pets known to man. Be the one that does it better. Scream from the mountaintops yeah. why it's better. Be the one that says, man, we don't sell commodity fish, we sell healthy pets here. Yes. Oh. That is the future, uh, and uh, there's probably a bunch of people out there. This is a great time to say uh, you agree, don't agree. Give us a terrible thumbs down, or give us a thumbs up because I'd love to hear Adam, it later uh, on. Adam's <laughs> on the uh, man in the things. He'll throw up uh, how many we were at. I think uh, we're this at is a great time. Like no, seventy five. I actually, five I actually think this ago. is just a commodity. Uh, this might as well be a burrito. All right, Adam, tell us where we are. <laughs> <laughs> might as well be a burrito. I don't know. Uh, all right, so I. Uh, I can't wait to see how this all pans out. All right, so 2025, all right. we're seeing... Information and tools on quarantining yeah. and medication. Yeah, let's get a video, please. No more hunting forums. No more arguing with people. Clear advice. Step one, two, three, four, done. Anything. Right? And it works, and it yeah. works, and it if works. you do this, this is the It'll easiest work. way, the most effective way. Just do these things, and you too can do this. And you don't have to. You can buy a thirty-dollar fish instead of a ninety. Have this thing set up at home, and part of your hobby is taking these fish and knowing you're doing something better, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but it isn't. I, I would. I would. I would wager of all the people out there that are watching right now saying, "Well, I've never done that before." It isn't because they don't want to or they're unwilling. It's just because a clear path to do it hasn't been presented. Yeah. If you did it and, it and it wasn't monstrously hard to go find that, well, if you right now the barrier to information is I don't want to go read forums on it. I know it's out there, but I mm -hmm. don't want to go read forums. Give me a video. Yeah. Well, and so the nature of the forum too is often that you're, you know, unless you're reading like the stickies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I'm actually learning from my peers rather than my mm -hmm. mentors. You know, and for me, Sticky's I don't want there. advice from Randy on how to quarantine my fish because he's my peer. <laughs> he's about the same place I am. I want to talk to Elliot. Yeah. 
I want somebody, I want to talk to humble fish. I want to talk to people that know their stuff and it has a high percentage uh, chance of success. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so there you go. 128 up, 11 <laughs> down. Nope. Oh, well, uh, you know. Adam, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Adam. Uh, there you go. Uh, I don't know. That's 10 to 1. That's not too bad. Uh, all right. So, uh, or provide, okay. I also want to provide them healthy to begin with or, or the medicated path, right? Mm -hmm. So provide you can provide both paths. I don't want to change the industry so every fish has to cost three times as much. No. It's just give you tell both paths. Tell me how to do it on my own mm -hmm. or do it for me. Yeah. I can go to the store that, that sells them at 30 bucks. I'll go to the one that's 90 mm -hmm. But the $30 one should tell me how to create the $90 one, not just leave me to my own advice yeah. and the devices. Uh, it's not like right. I'm going to eat into your margins, but... Okay. And then when you go to an online shop or a, a fish store, we should define what QT means. Like, mm. it shouldn't just say quarantined, uh, guaranteed. What does quarantine mean? Yeah. You know, why, like, does it mean you observed it for three days? Did you really do it? Did you uh, treat him with copper? Did you treat him for flukes and prosy pro? Transparency. You know, how many days was it? Did you do the tank transfer method? Do you do it better than Joe's uh, shop down the street? Uh, is, there, is there a reason I should get a pet from you versus somebody else? Yeah. Because uh, you both sell yellow tangs uh, and you're both 40 bucks. Why is this one healthier or better for my family and my pets that are already in the tank? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so let's just. QT, garbage word. Let's uh, <laughs> find out what actually is being done. Yeah. Uh, and like treated for parasites, how and which yeah, ones. Yeah. Uh, this is the part. This is the part, like, I, I don't know. I'm going to tell you a few of these. I'm going to ask for another thumbs up, thumbs down from people, I guess. <laughs> All right. I am buying a pet. I'm not just, I'm buying like a combination of a pet and a product from somebody. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I want to know how to be successful with it, which means that the person selling it to me should be able to answer some questions for yeah. me, especially if you've been doing this for 30 years. Right. I mean, even if it's just like a little card that's sitting next to it. Uh, but certainly if I asked you personally, you should be able to tell me. Or a video or anything, right? What is the diet details for this fish? Mm -hmm. How frequently should I feed it? Mm -hmm. what, what should, should I, I feed, feed it? it? Yeah. Uh, and how should I feed it? Yeah. You know, like, does frequency matter? Does, Do I need an auto uh, feeder? Just because it's, a, need, like, it's yeah. a chromis, uh, yeah. it's an anthia. You should feed it three times a day in small amounts. An auto feeder is a great option for this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a cherry anthia. Uh, it's the, the anomaly, like <laughs> krill. <laughs> 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 Even though the krill is almost as big as it is. It is. Uh, you know, like, uh, it's a, a tang, man. Uh, the the nori sheet isn't just for fun, so you can watch it pick at it. It's actually it's one of the most critical parts diet. of his diet. Yeah. You know, uh, it should have that information on the pet that I'm buying. Habitat details, like when I'm buying a, a fairy rat, uh, it doesn't mean that I uh, like just it has it to live in this thing. But it should be conveyed to me that it would do best in this yeah, thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I, and, and maybe this is, uh, I don't want to net pick on this thing, but like, where does it like to live? What's its natural habitat? What does it look like? Do you have a little video of it living Here, out in the ocean? Here's my tank. Is that suitable for the fish I'm trying to buy? Yeah, yes or no. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And, and know that like you're not turning away people. They're going to buy a fish from you. Yeah. you know, especially Maybe it's not that one. Like, one of the most satisfying things that ever happens to me is to when a no. salesperson tells me, no, you shouldn't buy that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, well, now I trust you when you tell me you should. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. So there you go. Uh, uh, tank size in detail. So yeah, this yellow tang, man. No, you hey, don't need a 180-gallon tank. This big right now. You yeah. Know. But he will need a 100 gallon tank in three years or mm. uh, two and a half years or whatever it is. So you can either bring yeah. him back to me yeah. or well, yeah. hey, get a bigger bring, tank. Like, if you want to bring him back options. in three years, uh, yeah. I'm glad to take him back yeah. and we can give you a small one again because <laughs> the big ones sell for more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? Uh, good idea. Uh, but uh, temperature details like, does this fish happen to like, uh, you know, 98 degrees? Is it like uh, 72 degrees? Yeah. What will happen if, I, if you're outside of that? Uh, uh, husbandry details like, does it, is it 
Unlikely, if you're going to get two tangs, you already have a tang. Here's some strategies on how to actually get along with the other one. Right. Uh, you know, maybe you want to add three at a time just to disperse the thing. You know, like, but have knowledge on the pet that we're trying to sell here. Acclimation details. You know, like, is it acclimation just like trying to transfer some salt water in, or is it really a, a, a shy fish that's going to get beat up on easily? And how to spot like what to do about it? Imagine aggression, uh, signs of health with this fish. Mm. You know, throw the reef safe with caution in the trash. Uh, this fish has this behavior 80% of the time. This fish has this behavior 20% of the time. These are the things that tend to cause that. Reef safe with caution in this case means. He'll eat zoanthids, but he generally leaves uh, uh, SPS alone. You know what? There you go. I don't care. You yeah. know, I don't have zoanthids. Zoanthids. You've in my been tank warmed, or but I didn't just leave you no. with reef safe with caution. Yep. That's or, the only answer yeah, I have for you. Yeah, he'll eat inverts. You know, inverts are part of a reef safe tank. And mm. you know, like, what inverts? Is it just shrimp, or will he eat snails and crabs? Yeah. You know, like, like yeah. reef safe with caution is a generic tag. We throw that thing in the trash and say, you know, like. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what to call it. Reef safe with caution, danger to crabs. There you go. Here's the thing that we do. Yeah. You know, this Expand is the, on that a little this bit, is the risk. <laughs> this is how you manage it. Yeah. You know, and I will tell you that I don't think a lot of people knew that, what the answers to that was in, in 2004. All the people at the top of the industry now they know the they answers know. to yeah. all that stuff. There's just no reason not to share it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. All right. So with us, uh, let's like uh, who take a heaping spoon, uh, spoonful of responsibility. We don't even sell fish here. No. But like, uh, I'd like to do this with BRS TV. Uh, I'd like to do it personally because mm. no one else to be seems to be signing up yeah, for it. Yeah, nobody else is doing it. Uh, and uh, frankly, advice from those who don't sell the fish for a living might be best. I don't know. And like, uh, so here's the thing, you won't see it from Randy and I. If you do see it, it's because we have brought in uh, some new the talent experts, into the Beers yeah. TV mix that are the thought leaders of the fish environment. You get to learn from them. Uh, and uh, the I don't know, there's just less pressure to try to, you know, be afraid that that information is not going to sell the fish or all that stuff when you don't sell it at all. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I can't say for sure that we're going to do this, but. I, I would tell you that I want to. Yeah. So uh, in 20, 25, for 2025, for sure we're doing this. Yeah, we'll have a uh, fish expert uh, BRS TV host. Yeah. In, in the question of whether or not we'll be doing this in 2021, mm. you know, a month or so from now, uh, I would like to uh, find, uh, if you are a fish expert and you want to move to Minnesota uh, and be part of the BRS team, uh, start, time to send us an email. Start ringing us up. <laughs> because uh, uh, I think we're on board. We'll work with this guy. Uh, all right. In fact, actually, I'm going to open that up. Okay. Uh, I think we're, like, uh, BRS TV is looking to expand some talent uh, beyond just Randy and I and in other and areas. Thomas, so, yeah. Uh, and Thomas. And so if you are interested at all in joining our team, uh, find a way to hit us up. Could you stand here in the uh, behind the camera for two and a half hours? Oh, two and a half hours is a bend. New record. This is the longest one new yet. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, Thanks, all right. Scott, for calling us out. Yes, it is a new record. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and so for those of you wondering, I don't know if BRS will ever sell fish, uh, but yeah. if, if we do, would it, it be in the would it be in the capacity like we do corals? Do you think? I don't know. Like we're just kind of dabbling, having yeah. fun with the corals with some of our friends in the industry. Yeah. So I, I don't know what that will really ever look like. Yeah. Uh, but if we ever do sell fish here at BRS, I can tell you this: it will look very different than uh, what's currently going on. Right. Uh, the closer to the goal isn't to sell an auto top off, it's to get the right auto top off and then make sure that you the right auto top off for your needs and then make sure you're successful with that auto top off later. The same thing applies to fish. Uh, <laughs> and so the net of that experience produces success for both of us and the same can be done for uh, fish. 
So, I mean, we've got a, a few questions here. We uh, do. Like if, so a country, couple of them have been deleted over time, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. So after all that, now is the time. The thumbs up, thumbs down. Like, does this message uh, like uh, ring true to you? Like an evolution of how you uh, d take fish, give us a thumbs up. If you're like, oh, all that stuff is garbage, I don't believe any yeah. of it, give us a thumbs up. I want to know so bad. Yeah, uh, Adam, uh, we got four questions here, so by the time I get to the third one, Adam, start calculating what we got. I think the thumbs up and thumbs down are different while we're live. Instead of afterwards. Oh so. yeah, you got to do it. Thumbs up and thumbs down on right the now. actual video itself, not in the like little oh, live comments. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if All that right. will change anything. All right. Uh, William says, "Has your LFS ever told you that buying many fish uh, too fast uh, help you down the right path?" Let's Has see. your lo a, le a local fish store ever told you that you're buying you're too many fish too, too fast, fast and help you down the right path? So that's actually always been the advice to me is to slow down and not bring in uh, that many here, fish and just a couple here. here. But now I'm kind of learning that uh, like that advice isn't universal because now for me it's that that actually produces aggression. Mm. You actually need a plan. Think out the types of fish that you want your tank. So there's only so many fish you can have in a tank. Yeah. So it's not like corals where you just keep adding them to the end of time. Yeah. You know, there's only so many fish. So having a plan of what you want and then building a plan and working that plan. So like if you're going to have a bunch of tangs in there, it's probably best to add them all at once. So uh, yeah, yep. I don't know. Uh, Vermont, John, uh, BRS, would you still quarantine a fish that is, uh, that is quarantined? I really like the idea of purchasing from places like Marine Collectors, but three weeks of quarantine does not really ensure parasite free. Uh, well, so I'm not going to claim I know uh, the perfect quarantine path yeah. and, and that three weeks or is this, is or isn't. So I, I will let the, you know, the, you know, quarantine, you know, debate go on outside of this realm. But uh, would I still quarantine a fish that's quarantined? I mean, so the answer that, that Elliot gave when he was here is like, yeah, but he's like also only to cover my butt. Right. You know, like. Because the answer is like you should quarantine a quarantine a quarantine a quarantine. Because like, there's like you never know. Next level. There's next no level, way to prove level. you got all yeah. of it, right? Yeah. Uh, what I would say is I would never personally quarantine a fish I got from Elliot or somebody else like him that I trust to be doing this correctly, that I trust to be doing this better than I would ever do it myself, uh, because my own quarantine practices are probably more harmful to the fish uh, than mm. the protection. And if I knew how to do it right. I'd actually just, and I was going to do it anyway, I'd just buy the cheap fish and do and it myself. And then do it myself. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Take the answer out of there. Interesting. Uh, Brianne asks, uh, what, do, what food do you guys feed the fish? And this is, uh, I think Josh is on like some of our mixed DIY that we mm -hmm. have in the freezer for a long time. There's a, actually, um, we'll... Oh, that would have been a good one to, I jumped ahead. That would have been a good one to lead in the end. We're going to have a video posted somewhere in here with the DIY fish food recipe, so you can uh, try this at home. You know, nutrition's been such a big portion yeah. of this conversation. Might yeah. well show you how to do it. And I'll tell you for sure, the only reason I'm making my own fish food right now is because I have five fish. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, but once the tank, tank is full of fish, I will definitely be making yeah. my own fish food. But for right now, actually, uh, I'm kind of stuck on the Rod's food, and then it's I'm going to put that... pre-DIY for you. Yeah, and then I'm going to put that... And the Rod's food, largely, for the antheas, but uh, like I'm gonna put in the uh, kind of my handle the krill. I, I change my mind all the time about some of these stuff, and, uh, and you just figure out what your fish like yeah. as part of the real answer to it. But I'm going to definitely put in uh, the uh, auto feeder near where the Johnson wrasses hang out, uh, so that they're fed you know consistently because yeah. they just seem to be mean. Also the the yellow yeah. tank or the white tail tank. The, by the way, the antheas are now mean to each other. Uh, they're trying to figure out who's going to be the male, but they don't bother <laughs> the other fish, so I don't know. Uh, last one here. Who was the first in the 160, the purples or the Sohal? The purples were first. The Sohal was just added in there like maybe a couple months ago, a few months, maybe a year. Maybe it's been in there a year now. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been in there as long. The purple tings have been in there a long time. The blotchy antheas and the uh, uh, purples have been in there for a very, very long yeah, time. Yeah, those bonies I mean, are huge. Those are like, these are the type of fish that we catch out of the lakes here in Minnesota. They're I know they look like sunfish. It's so big you can They're almost fillet them. I don't know. <laughs> like uh, I, actually, Elliot keeps bothering me. Is like, dude, if you ever get rid of those, you gotta give them to me. I'm like, no, I'm gonna take them home, dude. <laughs> uh, there's no way. They're super oh, cool. They're awesome. Uh, yeah. 
so all right. So tomorrow, uh, oh, we got another, Adam tomorrow? has the one sixty four to uh, eleven. No, oh, right. So one sixty four eleven. Few people hate our message, uh, right. and a uh, few people like it. So thank you very much. I love sharing uh, my experiences. Uh, hopefully they're valuable. Uh, Randy has uh, been invaluable to the journey <laughs> here. It's just it's been super fun sharing all this stuff. Good time. Tomorrow, yeah. Uh, you already have the topic. I don't. Uh, if I can think of one right off, uh, I don't have it yet. So surprise. tomorrow is going to be a brand new topic. History, 16 years of something or another. Something or other. Uh, we'll do it again at 6 o'clock tomorrow, yes. so you can join us again tomorrow. Uh, but this one's been particularly fun. You can see the whole list. We put a playlist of all these uh, histories of the 2016, history of like right, right here. here. And if you want to learn about how to make your own DIY you fish should. food in Reef Chili, you can do it right, right here. here. Hmm. <laughs>